Hello and welcome to episode 161 of Flicks in a Six. I'm one of your hosts, Anthony Costanzo. With me, forever and always, the man, the myth, the high beast, Alessandro Valsi. Say hello, Al. I've often said that I need more De Niro and Pacino nudity in sex scenes of my life. I've often said that. Uh, <laughs> on this week's episode, what we've watched, some weird shit coming to a screen near you, and other news and nuggets, all before diving into our flick of the week, heat. But first, Al, what are we drinking? I'm not sure what we're drinking, but I think we may be rubbing bleach in our eyes to clean <laughs> out of our retinas. Um, I'll tell you what we've seen, and it wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there was the first scene, and then there was another scene, and I was like, okay, and then we got... That's just Pacino. And then we get De Niro also later. And I'm like, you know, I just, I don't need this in my life. Does anyone? Does anyone I don't think anybody need, I don't think anybody anyone? wants it. Did people find I mean, them attractive? Did people well, find he, them attractive? Here's the thing, right? Al Pacino was a decent looking guy when he was young. He wasn't young in this movie. No. Al Pacino's been the same age for like 30 years. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the last 10 years, he's rapidly been aging. But the 30 years before that, yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much all the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah he, no, I uh, think once he went full Pacino, he pickled, and <laughs> that's and he's looked like that ever since. <laughs> he, he pickled. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. No, the thing is, at the point that this movie was made, 1995, at which I was five years old, wasn't attractive in any way, shape, or form. No, neither of them really. No. Um, although I say the goatee wasn't a bad look for De Niro overall. That's fair. But yeah. No, I, I don't think of either of them as like sex icon type sure. like actors so do, i mean like listen we're not seeing like full frontal or even rear nudity but like just not 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 a value add to me no nah. but anyway no, we're drinking not a fan uh, <laughs> not a fan of that moving we're right drinking, along uh, we're, we're drinking 212 brewing companies south street seaport india pale ale um it's an IPA <laughs> S- side side note on this one I send Al a message before the show, which beer tonight? And he sends me an address. And I'm like, do I have to go get it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't realize that. As, I just tried to give you as much information as I knew would give you the answer you needed. So you would immediately be able to find it. it well, what am I going to find here? My next clue? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I send you like a name or something and you're like, I don't know what that is. And I was like, oh, right. 212 is massive right on the front of this. Like there's a big logo like slapped across the can. So if I give him 212 and the fact that it's a South Street Seaport, the next biggest text on the can, surely he'll be able to find it. Sure. Not realizing oh. it sounded like an address. And I was fortunate enough that when I opened the fridge, this one was right there. And that never happens. <laughs> Did that happen last week too or two weeks ago? There was an, uh, you I think it, it was two weeks ago, but, but this week I think the refrigerator knew that Zencast was going to give a shit and getting started <laughs> was going to be trouble. So like they didn't want me to have to search for the beer. So I appreciate that <laughs> beer. Also, not too thrilled with you, Zencaster. <laughs> you, you have drawn Anthony's ire officially. Um, so anyway, South Street Seaport India Pale Ale. Uh, it's made in the Bronx um, by 212 Brewing Company at 463 East 173rd Street, Bronx, New York. As long as we're doing addresses. Um, I do think that your in, the intention is that you read it 212. No, absolutely. It's the, uh, it's the area code. Yeah. Um. There's no question about that. Are you rebelling against it specifically <laughs> calling it 212 or I don't I care. Mean, I'm just curious. Two, one, two, two, twelve, one, three syllables, one's two and a half syllables. So I don't know. I, I two and a half syllables. <laughs> well, you know, when you have 12, 12, it's one yeah. vowel sound, but 12. it's kind of one and a half. I hear you. I never thought about it that way. So, yeah, I'm listen, we have revolutionized. The scoring of beers with thuckles. Why can we not also disrupt the grammar space? And I, I because Brian it. disrupt Brian disrupts my grammar space all the time. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to formally disrupt the grammar space for all English speakers. Brian, and Brian keeps you on on your toes. I uh, yes. if if you want to if you want a little bit of extra hint of flicks in the six with your video games, you should check out our Game Bites episode on Scott Pilgrim on account of 
Brian had us drink a beer and he said, what are we drinking? And I just went for it. And I, I went full you and I read the can. <laughs> it was good. We had a good time. <laughs> Wait, how was I not invited for a Scott Pilgrim themed episode? You didn't play the game. Uh, and honestly, it's better that you didn't. <laughs> uh, is it bad? Spoiler alert. Game is hot trash. <laughs> uh, unpopular opinion, for sure. Um, it's a beloved game. Oh, I, oh, okay. I thought it was bad. So did Brian. Fair enough. <laughs> getting back to this. Getting back to <laughs> getting back to two twelve. Um, two South Street. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> uh, this one features Cascade, Northern Brewer, and Falconer's Flight hops. Provides a hint of citrus while complementing a strong traditional traditional. Apparently, there's traditional. no R in that word. Strong. <laughs> Traditional. I think it was because it was strong traditional. I think I didn't like that those two sounds back to back. I think you were strong just trying to cut one of those syllables in half. <laughs> Why need more syllable when less syllable good? <laughs> uh, strong traditional malt profile. I'm going to finish that sentence. I swear to God. Mm-hmm. Um, we're dedicated to sharing our passion for the rich culture and vibrant history of New York through premium craft beers that use local ingredients and resources. I wonder, do they have, like, hop trellises on skyscrapers or something like that? Okay, maybe. Our South Street Seaport IPA represents the historic area in Manhattan where the first shipping pier was built in 1625. From 1815 to 1860, the area was called the Port of New York and was the country's largest system of maritime trade. We have to go outside the box on that naming convention. (laughs) (laughs) It's the port of New York. Got it. Um, centered where Fulton <laughs> Street meets the East River. Today, the, tr- the area features some of the oldest architecture in New York City, original mercantile buildings, renovated sailing ships, and the former Fulton Fish Market. Cool. Uh, this beer, when I poured it, it looked really pretty. Yes, but it is. A, then I continued a- to pour it, and things happened. Well, I think it's got a little... Uh, Got a little gunk at the bottom of that can it's that kind of got, cloudies it got up. Got a little dust, yep. Definitely has some dust. Beer dust. I can tell you for a fact, you're going to enjoy this beer, because I drank this with dinner the other day, and it's oh. delightful. So. Exciting. Can you do me a favor? Can you get, take a big old whiff? Take a big one. Really sniff in that beer. Okay? You got it? Yeah, I have beer in my mustache now, because I sniffed it so good. Why, why olives? How come olives? <laughs> <laughs> so olives are salty. And at the South Street Seaport, there's fish, which are also salty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost just got a spit take from Anthony pre-drink. I don't know how that's yeah. possible. But the, I, the beer sloshed up against the glass. It did. <laughs> it's Yeah, it wasn't good. Um, it's freedom. And it's money. <laughs> and it's fish. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's try this one, shall we? <laughs> Cheers. God. No. Hello? Can you hear me? I, yes. I tried to cheers the microphone and I hit the mute button with the glass. Spectacular. Like it's the one thing you, you shouldn't have hit. Oh, yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad my powers of prediction were, uh, were accurate mm. today. Mm-hmm. It doesn't taste like olives. A little bit. Not a bad <laughs> way. I love olives, so that's fun. Oh, my God. Those green... Is there a, oh, the, is, the Sicilian olives? Is that what they are? Oh. The green Sicilian olives? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my God. I can literally eat a pound of those at a time. That's right. Oh, when my dad comes home, like, uh, comes comes home, comes over. He doesn't come home. He doesn't live here. When my dad comes over with a giant jar of those that, like, my oh. Uncle Vinny mixed. Oh. 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 <laughs> Give me that. A loaf of bread. Done. <laughs> it's over. A whole loaf. Wow. And a whole loaf. I want the Actually, whole loaf. And some sharp provolone. Synergy here. Ooh, sharp provolone, good, but my preference with that whole setup, especially if you got like the spiced olive oil, is the fresh mozzarella, especially like if your dad made it. Yeah, yeah, that's good too. I'm I'm, um, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of the hard cheeses. Sure, I, I just love the marinated mozzarella. Olives. Yes, um, yeah, it's it's good stuff. But um, the other day we had there's a bakery down the street from where my brother lives, and he brings us breads, and he brought us. Kalamata, Kalamata olive bread, mm. which we had with like seasoned olive oil. Yeah, I'll eat all of that. Delightful. You can just, you can just send that over here. 
I'll finish that. <laughs> that's, uh, this, I'm all about that. That's what oh. we'll do. When you finally get to come up here for the next time, we'll get you some Kalamata olive bread. We'll have some of your dad's cheese. We'll have some Gorgonzola french fries. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if you don't say Gorgonzola french fries, this friendship is over. We are officially <laughs> only family. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, every time I get them, I will continue to send you a picture. I appreciate it. <laughs> but it doesn't really torture me so much. I, I'm just hoping that it's not hyping it up too much. No, I mean, like, they're really good. Like, they're, mm-hmm. they're what you, like, I don't want to say it's the best thing in the world. Like, it's not that. They're really good. Yeah. Really good. I want an hour steak. I miss hour steak so much. It's been so many years since we've it's been so long. Steak. Yeah. I did have a delightful steak on Sunday. It was a, a thick porterhouse cooked nearly to perfection it was quite rare i would like it to be very rare but it was quite rare okay oh, so, good. so good nice uh, roasted nice. roasted potatoes um in the style that we typically make them um what else did we have anything else for dinner there was some sort of vegetable i don't i don't remember what it was yeah sure. vegetable it's usually good to have one of those yeah, yeah. Uh, that was but that was later in the day we had had the the kalamata olive bread earlier that day so oh yeah i, I said that to my dad once i was like what about a vegetable? And he said, there's corn. And I was like, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Listen, it comes in something green, okay? <laughs> Admittedly, you do, not, you do not eat that thing, but still. Sure. Um, I had some delightful Mexican food on Saturday. Um, oh, place me too. Us. There was, there was too. a pretty solid Mexican restaurant near us. It closed down like a year and a half ago and, mm. or two years ago, something like that. And a new one opened like right at the start of the pandemic in the same spot. And we had it once like a month later and it was good, but there was so much cinnamon in it. Which cinnamon. Apparently. Yeah. I think it was cinnamon. Yeah. I want to say it was cinnamon. Yes. Okay. Um, and I was like, huh? Like, I know this can be a thing, but this sure. seems like too much. Hey, it went overboard. Uh, we had it again this past weekend and Oh, they, they, they Bless. figured out the mix. Less cinnamon. Is it possible that they went to shake the cinnamon and they opened up that other... You know how there's two flaps? Did they open up the flap that you put the spoon in? And they're like, oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's possible, except it was in, like, everything. Yeah. Well, it could, have been, it could have been in whatever their primary, like, seasoning mix is, and then, like, that... Sorry, I I'm, I'm might be making a lot of noise right now. There's a lot of static somewhere <laughs> near my head. And I don't like it. Well, it's um, probably when you smack the microphone with your beer. It could be good. Good cinnamon. Good. Too much cinnamon. Surely bad. Yes. No. This yeah. was properly proportioned. I had chicken enchiladas with poblano mole sauce. Oh, get down! That's oh, that's what's it was up. Real good. I love enchiladas. I love Mexican food. I can eat Mexican food every day. I think I'd be all right with it. I know, and I don't really have like good. Like, oh, yeah, we make, like, tacos or burritos or whatever, like, you know, but, like, we get to have actual Mexican food all, all that often. There aren't a ton mm. of good places in there. There's a bunch of places that are, like, eh. Right I, there, but this one's good. We have some good, really good ones, like, very close by, and I also am pretty good at making Mexican food. So it, it all yeah. works out really well. Um, but, yeah, the, the, I, I well, obviously I love Italian food, but Mexican food is my number one, I'm pretty sure. Wow. Okay. I don't know where, like, maybe I'll put pizza above that, but mm. I, I've i had my fair share of pizza. Like, if I didn't have pizza again for the rest of my life, I probably still had more than you. That's well, that's I mean, where you, I'm at. <laughs> your, your, dad, your dad owned a pizzeria for like 20 that's hours. Right. <laughs> that's right. Working there uh, 12 hours straight on a Saturday, y- you put down some slices. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. It happens. I mean, listen, I you're right. I probably haven't had it as much, but I've had a lot of fucking pizza in my life. Sure. <laughs> I mean, my mom does make it every single Friday. So nice, nice. Ah, but, love a good pizza. This beer is. Uh, I'm going two thuckles. Only two. Wow. Two thuckles. Yeah. Solid thumb. Was, um, <laughs> I well, it could be two, <laughs> two not so solid half thumbs. You know, there's something there. There's something there. It's not quite. It, it's not quite getting that third thuckle. I don't know what it is that it could tweak. That would get it there for me, but I I I don't dislike it by any means. It's delicious. Um, I'm gonna go with three thuckles for sure. This is that's a, fair. I think it's fair. A very very good representation of, of an olivey, fresh fresh from the seaport IPA. That's right. 
Right. Olives, olives fresh from the mouth of the fish. <laughs> um, the if I, one thing one I, I don't know if this is like the appropriate way to describe it, but everything seems very balanced. Like all of the different bits of flavor that I would pull out of a beer, like they're there and they're all kind of equal, and I like that. Yes, that I, very well time. balanced. You have yeah. the, you have the juiciness, which is actually probably part of the biggest reason why I thought you were like this is, I guess not technically called a New England style IPA, but it's very much in that vein. Um, yeah, it's 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 close. This is like you, you know all those ones that say juicy and aren't they look like this mm-hmm. but this looks like that and is juicy <laughs> but they don't it doesn't look like it doesn't look like that uh like it doesn't look like glass orange juice though yeah which is like that's the that's the ultimate <laughs> when it looks like um, a glass of orange juice i'm sold it could be a glass of orange juice <laughs> uh, that would be fine too <laughs> but as long as it says ipa on it we're good that's right we're good <laughs> No, it's, it's bitter it's plenty, orange it's plenty, juice. <laughs> it's it's plenty juicy. Um, it's pithy. Got, it's got no. It's not pithy. Um, it's it's definitely bitter enough, but not runaway bitterness. It's got the good maltiness, as alluded to in the story when I couldn't say strong traditional malt profile. Um, mm-hmm. But it's not super sweet either. Like where you start getting to the sickly right. range, it's. Got yeah, a nice no, that's, that's that's a place I don't want to be. I don't want to be in Nose. the sickly malt range for sure. <laughs> nice head retention too. When I don't know, so when you pour it, in. yeah, yep. And uh, it also I, I like when it sticks to the side of the glass like that too. When you give it a little swirl, yeah, that's mm-hmm. sticking around. That's good. Um, the chunky bottom is not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a fan of that. I don't. I know that it's not a big deal, but when there's shit floating in the bottom of the glass, it's unsettling. <laughs> you know what they say: fat bottom beers. Make the rock and roll go around. That's uh, they do say that. Um, the uh, what? Well, there's just been those times where we've both poured the same beer, and mine has been a completely different color than yours. That's that's concerning. Yes, yes. Um, I, I seem like they were about the same color. No, they they look good. Hold yours up. Yeah, I think so, we're good. So your your room is more well and more backlit than mine. So no, but they're the they same. Look a little different. They look the same. I like this one. Cool. There. Uh, what, what, see what concerns me. It's not when the color looks slightly different, because it's hard to tell through the, the Skype. It's when one of ours is crystal clear, and the other one looks like a milkshake. That's what concerns mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then it's like, which one's right? <laughs> yeah, which one's right, which one's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't expect this beer to be hazy. That's because it's not supposed to be. <laughs> Actually, Did it says right here the, the right bottle, can? crystal clear at all times, yeah. and not call 911. <laughs> right, right. Oh boy! Uh, before we get into news and nuggets, something happened. I'm trying to remember what it was. I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but I had a straight up Diane Kruger effect. Not a double recently. Diane Kruger. Not a double. Uh, wait a minute. It might have been a double. It was a double. Okay, that's why. That's why it was relevant. So I I'm working on this little project. It's building uh, kind of like a retro console machine, regardless. I'm building this thing. I had just heard about it. Uh, never heard about it before. Never heard about the tech that was being used on the board. That tech came up in conversation with somebody over here. That's a good, that, that's one. Okay. That's a Diane Kruger. Right? And I was like, huh. And then that person said something about keyboard, like mechanical keyboard switches which was another like a, a, a term about them that which now I'm drawing a blank on that I had not heard before. And then moments later <laughs> in another chat with somebody else, they said that word and I went, what is happening? And then I started to write straight up Diane Kruger. And before I hit send went, they have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> so this is like the inverse version of the double Diane Kruger from what I had. Yeah, like this is a chain sides. reaction Kruger. Is this like the parallel Diane Kruger, or like what? I, I don't. I mean, I feel like because they're, really they're sure. both linked to the same thing, it should be a double. But like the way they came was different. It's like two things came together in one versus like one thing leading to two other things. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm lost in the. I'm lost in the effect. Yeah, I'm lost in the DDK. All I know is there's too much. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Doomsday Killer? <laughs> <laughs> DDK, we're taking it back. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> oh boy. Well, it's funny. It's funny. You want to talk Diane Kruger though, because you mentioned last week, either sure. on the show or before the show, you mentioned the downloading all the games. Yeah. Yeah, that was before the show for sure. <laughs> well, right before we started the show today, uh something came up about a archive of all the video games being created by some group online. Oh. I'm sure that's the same thing, is it not? Maybe. You have to tell me what this is. Yeah, I'll have to find the story and see if I can send it to you. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm down with that. Uh, let's get into some news and nuggets. Okay. Al, insist. there's been... Uh, Snyder's still going, right? He's just... He's just... Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> he's, just, he's just going, saying shit constantly. Uh, I'm still not convinced the movie's actually coming out, but regardless... A black and white version is coming out titled Justice is Gray Edition. What are your what? thoughts? <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I was trying to see if I could find this thing. But did I just say that? Or did you just say that we're getting a black and white version of the Snyder Cut? Is that what you said? That's right. That's right. Why? I don't know. Why? I don't know. Did, you, did anybody, did somebody specifically ask for it? I specifically asked for none of this. And no one took my advice. So. <laughs> Well, we uh, on, on top of that, we also got that new trailer. Did you watch the new trailer or the yes, trailer? Why, is it a new trailer or is it a trailer? Sorry, what was the question again? Is it a new trailer or is it just a trailer? <laughs> like, it was new to me. Did, okay, did we? It was like I feel like here's the thing. I'm watching the trailer and I'm like, this looks the same as the movie I saw. So I don't see that's that's what I was trying to. <laughs> that's why I brought. That's what I brought up because I've been trying to avoid it. You've been bringing it up. You somehow have like slingshotted past me to now seem to be hating this version of it more than I do. Yes. Which is impressive. But you did this I to me. Like, yeah, why no, Zack Snyder did this to you. No, right? Zach did this so to leave me. me yeah. out of it. Leave me out of all of it, in fact. Um, no. But I can't. Uh, We're gonna watch it. <laughs> contractually obligated. Contractually obligated by the contract we did not sign. Yeah. It's like I uh yeah, like like, like, oh, I want to watch this. Uh, I'm not really sure if I'm interested. And then I just play the flicks in a six card. And you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> That's literally what you did to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I watched the trailer yesterday. So it was like, or two days ago, because I was like, mm -hmm. okay. They dropped the trailer. It's like the movie's going to be out in a few more weeks. We're not talking about it again until we talk about the movie. When it comes out, we watch it. This is the final time I want to talk about it until then. It's like, I'll just sure. watch the trailer. I watched it and I was like, a lot of these things are from my vague memories of this movie because I saw it one time. Um, and I think I saw like five minutes of it on TV. Um, okay. There is one thing I think that was new at the end, and it's the scene with Jared Leto's Joker. Because mm -hmm. that definitely was not in the movie. But That's all the other right. stuff, if you told me it was or was not in the movie, I would have been like, yes or no or whatever. Some of sure. it definitely I remember. Some of it I'm like, yeah, that seems right. Yeah. It's this whole thing is so weird though. What what I will say definitely is like was it like Dark Side and whoever the fuck Steppenwolf they looked different so obviously they updated the CGI there. Oh. Uh, yeah, I guess they did look a little bit a little bit better, not like drastically different, I don't think, but just more detailed? Sure. More like a solid more like solid chunks of a mirror rather than a flowing sea. <laughs> is that? <laughs> well, is it also less like shiny, which a lot of times yeah. they feel like less well rendered. Like they're just seeing yeah. more detail and texture to it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I don't understand. I I just I don't understand this. Like what's happening? Well, it's funny too because it's not so subtle that right off, uh, either right at the beginning or right at the end, it's. Not the Snyder Cut, it's Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is, you know, fully right. taking it back type of thing. Yeah. I mean, what is it, is it, at the end of the day, is it a different story? I, I don't know, because I've heard wildly different takes on how many times, or how much new shooting of the movie they were going to do, or not do, and what's made it in, and what has not made it in, and I, I, I just don't know until I see it, and I'm going to only half remember the original movie anyway. I've kind of been thinking about, unfortunately, subjecting myself to watching the director's cut of Batman for Superman, and that, again, 
just so I can make the compare. Like, because just honestly, it's just for the show. I'm doing it yeah. for the contract that I've been. I appreciate I'm doing it. it for the show because if I'm going to talk about it, I might as well talk about it well, even if it's just dump. Of course, work. of course. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, the director's cut is far better than the original film. I mean, it couldn't be worse. Um, but that being said, the director's cut is better because where there were giant gaps in establishing a reason for doing things, there are full <laughs> scenes <laughs> that, that were just put back in. <laughs> and it, you know, it sometimes better. less is more, but the original version of that was a, still a long movie. So in this case, they need more to be more? Uh, yeah? I don't know, They need man. more to be enough. This whole thing, it's so bizarre. It's so. Yes. I feel like, so I'm kind of curious, because I, I wasn't, I wasn't like um, into it while all of this stuff happened, but Blade Runner, right? Mm -hmm. There's like a hundred versions of that movie. Yeah, I just don't care enough to find out why there are so yeah. many different versions. But what the one that we watched, I think, is like the definitive director's <laughs> hoopla. I'm not sure what version oh, it was. I I thought. We watched the theatrical cut, but maybe I misremembered oh. what it said. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, anyway, that being said, I was like, and that still wasn't very good. <laughs> so, <laughs> what are we going to get with it? I feel I am compelled. I, I will, I will rewatch. I'm saying this with too much authority because there's like, I don't care that much. I, I want to rewatch Justice League <laughs> before watching the new version of it just so that see, like, I don't, you, like so I don't I actually see the differences. want to I just feel like I should I want to because I'm fascinated by this whole thing that's happening like the way I'm fascinated by train wrecks yeah like it, like this is my Jersey Shore I want to be <laughs> the second Dexter reference here like I I want to look at the crime scene and understand how and why it happened <laughs> Right, right. I mean, we really, really want to dissect it. I just want to, like, I've never actively rooted against something. I don't think. Like a movie or anything? Just things. Like, I, I never actively rooted against something that I guess is like, I don't know. I want to say that's harmless, but I don't think that it's harmless. I think of this is damaging to the movie industry. <laughs> but yeah. I am yeah. actively rooting because against you're it. I want it to blueprint. fail miserably. You're creating a blueprint for every time there's failure. Oh no! Sorry, we'll just we'll just fix it. It didn't happen. Right, right. Like no, you. I want this to be comically. It, right it needs to be comically worse than the first time that it was released. <laughs> That's and that would honestly that would really make this entire experience for me worth it. Some, <laughs> somehow, not only did they not CGI out the mustache, but there's somehow two mustaches. I like it, there's two <laughs> mustaches, and it's like and every every costume has nipples. Like we go full Schumacher. Like it's like that's how we bring it back, you know. Somehow the f the Flash has like a cat's like eight nipples or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's right. That'll that'll do it. Oh man, when does this thing come out? Uh, in the next month ish. Okay, is it a sometime it's a March, March jam? Yeah. All right. I just don't remember the date. Sometime something else coming out on on that HBO Max in March. Nope, April. In April, Mortal uh, Kombat. Oh, is that what is that where it's coming out? I think so. Yeah, it's in theaters and on HBO. You know, I watched the trailer. I should probably know, like, m like seconds before we started recording. And I like uh, th this whole conversation of oh, HBO is doing this thing where it's going to go in theaters and on HBO day and date. You know, like oh, this might be the end of the movies. No, it's not. They only have trash. That's why they're doing it. <laughs> well, I was to say it's funny because well. It's funny in a lot of ways, but they're dumping all these trash movies here because they can save face when they don't make any money off of them. Mm -hmm. But, oh my god, how are all of these movies bad? I don't know. Like, listen, you're not making a Mortal Kombat movie to win an Oscar, right? Okay, fine, fair enough. Like, that you're doing for big, dumb action. You're not, and that should be how you approach it. And then I watched the trailer. I was like, wait, is that what you're trying to do? Because you're missing the point. <laughs> what do you mean? It seems like it's taking itself very seriously. Well, it seems like it's taking the source material seriously, um, which is a weird sentence to say. Uh, <laughs> sure. Sure. But um, 
I mean, it it didn't look like the campy cheesiness of a 90s movie, which, spoiler alert, that's what Mortal Kombat was. Like, right. it did get the tone right, maybe a little too far into the cheese, but still, like, I got what it was going for or whatever, and it's fun yeah. for what it is. It's a bad movie, objectively, like, as, like, film goes, but, like... Sure, yeah, hands down. But <laughs> fun, right? Oh, yeah, um, I enjoy it. looks like it could have some fun, but it looks like it's trying to be a movie... Which obviously is because they want it to be a series. Mm-hmm. But you could already see like there's like nods and Easter egg type stuff to point towards a larger world that they'd want to build out of it. Which yeah, is like every, everything gets go. launched like from the get go as like this is a new franchise. It's like no, just start like sh- like small, narrow that scope down first, and if it's good, go on. Guys, and you, and you got and it's guys, not that you hard. The, you got the blueprint. What was it? Twelve years ago, Iron Man. So obvious that they could launch a franchise from it, but it wasn't right. carefully crafted to be franchise the, launch, it, launching. It was, yeah, if this is good, we have the threads to go on. And look, that's right. They made a good movie, but the first thing they tried to do was make a good movie. And if it's bad, you could still make two. We got a second Mortal Kombat movie <laughs> before. <Yeah. laughs> Mortal Kombat Annihilation was ridiculous. <laughs> like the I first one was saying. ridiculous, but Annihilation was ridiculous. <laughs> like I know it's insane. I never Out of control. saw the second one. There's a there's a noticeable lack of Johnny Cage. Doesn't he die in like the first scene or something? Uh no, uh, in the in in this new one. Oh, okay, yeah. Didn't didn't see him, didn't see him there. I saw what appeared to be a man that is acting like Scorpion and then Scorpion. So, like, is that is there a character arc there? <laughs> We're clearly getting a Scorpion origin story in this movie, <laughs> which is insane. We also are uh, rewriting how I don't know the original story, but I've definitely heard this one. So I'm saying rewriting how Jack's got his arms. Scorpion well, well, shatters them. Well, the uh, Sub Zero, sorry. <laughs> that happened. I was like, "Oh, that was fucked up." And then, yeah. the, the, I heard voiceover like one or two scenes later, and I was like, "Isn't that the guy who just had his arms ripped off?" And then I was like, "Oh wait, there was a guy with weird arms." And that's know, right, that wasn't there. And then they show him with the middle arms. I was like, oh yeah, there's that guy. Didn't remember his name. Jax. Um, and then they said Jax, and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah right." That's right. That's, that's right. Uh, yeah, that's a weird trailer. It's silly. It doesn't do anything to get me like, oh, this is so ridiculous. I have to see it excited. It makes me go, oh, they might be trying to do this too seriously and it's going to be bad. No, but I will say that the Scorpion Sub-Zero fight, at least like I was like, oh, okay. So that's what doing a Mortal Kombat movie in 2021 looks like. You sure. can do really cool stunts and effects and fight scenes. And, see- Cause it did and they were all- <laughs> there were also a couple of quick cut things at the end that seemed like they might have been like fatalities. I was like, oh, I guess those people are gone. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, there's a bunch of people that definitely died, and <laughs> they did the finishing thing, so. Yeah, yeah. anyway, uh, I'll watch that. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to watch it. I feel like it'll be well, a fun watch. Especially if I have to pay no money for it. If, I, if it's on HBO Max, we can do that. True, true. Uh, I will say Goro looked like trash compared to the 90s one. Well, he was CGI. I know. The 90s one looked far better. Goro was a weird practical effect. <laughs> it was, it was, but they went for it. Yeah, they did. They really went for it. You know, it was not a great a great scene. Him falling off that cliff, <laughs> not a great scene. <laughs> All the arms <laughs> <laughs> doing his best Schwarzenegger impression as he's falling through his doom. That was a that was a rough one. That was rough. Um, I get. I have. I'm thinking about the original Mortal Kombat movie, and like random scenes are flashing in my head, and I. I I can remember so many scenes and set pieces from that movie, but I cannot for the life of me piece them together in some sort of chronological order. Uh, yeah, no, I would struggle. It's been a long Your soul is mine. <laughs> that, that's all. That's the end. Well, well and the beginning. Times, so. The beginning and the end? And the middle. He's, What's in the middle, too? At least three times he says it, I'm pretty sure. So. Mm. I think it marks the axe of the film. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's coming out. We'll watch that. Uh, it'll be fun. Uh, there's another movie on there that we should probably do. There's like a Godzilla movie on there, isn't there? 
Sorry, I'm sitting on a cable. It's very long. <laughs> Making a lot of noise. There's a Godzilla movie on, on HBO? I think so. I mean, there's there was a trailer that came out a couple weeks ago for Kong vs. Godzilla, but I thought yeah, isn't that, it? that was like down the line. Are you sure it's not on the like, line? March 31st. Was, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so not only are they going to release all of these things on HBO Max and in theaters, they're just going to do them on the same day. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Like, it's not uh, the same day, but it feels that. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll watch that. I feel like I'm missing a movie, though. Wasn't there a second Godzilla? Did we do that? Did I watch that? I don't think I watched um, the second one. I, I thought you watched it. I never got to see it. I watched it? I don't think I watched it. Well, you definitely saw the first one. and I, I saw the first one. That's right. And we kind of did an episode on it, didn't we? <laughs> we did it as like a prologue to talk about Kong Skull Island. Right. Right. Kong was a fun movie. <clears throat> that was a good movie. Um, the second one, it's funny. The second one had some of the weird, most like weirdly striated like reviews because the people who liked that movie loved that movie. Wait, the second what? Godzilla. Oh, okay. Um, was it King of the Monsters? Uh, sure. Um, and yes, it was. You know, now that I think about it, I don't know if you saw the movie or if you one of the movies you went to had like a ten minute scene of it beforehand. Yep, yep. So you definitely that was remember me. you talking about that. I just don't remember if you said you actually also went to see the movie or not. We talked about no. doing it for the show, and it never happened. I didn't see it. I actually, I vividly remember this. Unfortunately, I don't remember what movie it was I was seeing where this happened. But I was in an IMAX theater. There was like a 10-minute Godzilla uh, King of the Monsters teaser or sizzle or whatever it was. It was like some fight, like leading up to some fight scene, maybe a little bit of the fight scene. I don't really remember. But it was like this crazy thing. And then the first thing that came after that teaser was the trailer for the movie. And I was like, oh my god, too much of this. <laughs> too much of this for this sitting of what I'm actually here to see. <laughs> oh, so was it of it was it of one of the fights or was it the um like the unveiling of uh King Ghidra? Was it was it just that I, whole thing? I think it might have been like a a little basically like an extended trailer. I feel like there was a little bit more depth than like there was some I think we we got into some fighting. Okay. But nothing, nothing like nothing spoilery. I don't think just to show you, I guess, the spectacle. But I was like, well, I mean, I thought now, now I wonder what I was, what I was seeing that that when we saw that. Anyway, I thought it looked fantastic, just like visual. Mm. I, I remember seeing that sequence, and it looked incredible. Um, I don't know. I, I know. I there was one review. I uh, it was the guy who was at the Escapist. Um, what the hell is it? Oh, uh, Bob Chipman, who does... I, I, I haven't watched any of his videos in a long time, just because I haven't had the time. But he, he does, like, fun, like, reviews and, like, different... Because like, half of his videos are reviews and half of his things are, like, about, like, TV or movie, like, the industry or, like, a particular thing that's in the current moment or whatever. Like, he, But he did the review on that. And at one point, he literally just devolved into him playing with Godzilla and Ghidra toys. <laughs> Uh, he's like he's like he's like I'm sorry you don't want to watch your monsters fighting in a monster movie what is wrong with you people <laughs> he goes D you know like this is what this is supposed to be about it's a bunch of big stupid fucking monsters fighting each other like <laughs> I'm pretty sure he gave that movie 10 out of 10 <laughs> that's pretty great um trailer in IMAX with shit oh it was Good. You know what? Sometimes the internet. Sometimes you could type random shit in, and you get exactly what you're looking for. It was it. It played before Shazam. Ah, which I would have never guessed that in a million years. <laughs> but what makes happens sense. if you type two two twelve South Street Seaport? <laughs> two twelve South Street Seaport. You just get the address. Whoa, and the first oh, you get the address because it looks like an address, so like it shows up a map. But the first actual result is South Street Seaport IPA T12 Brewing Company. Ah, uh, that makes sense. All untapped. Nice, Al. Uh, what, what what's 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 going on, Mister and Mrs. Smith? You told me that you have something on this. I don't know what what didn't this come out a long time ago. Okay, yeah. So you haven't heard the news. Uh, yeah. So there was a 2005 movie starring Brad Pitt and, and I almost said Jennifer Aniston. 
Um, Angelina Jolie. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> and uh, first of all, what did you think about that movie? Um, I know I saw it. I want to say it was fine. Yeah, sure. It's fun. It's fine. Yeah. Um, that was a movie I weirdly have seen a bunch of times. It's probably like a solid six, right? Like not trying to be more than that and definitely isn't being more than that. Yeah, but like a six with a positive connotation. Like it's, yeah, yeah. it's a not, good time, but like not, it's not like a great movie. Like it's just yeah. a good time. I think there's a difference between a six shooting for six and a six shooting for seven. <laughs> and I think <laughs> and this was this was the former. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, what a random announcement to see come across my virtual desk the other day. Um, Donald Glover and Phoebe Waller-Bridge to star in Mr. and Mrs. Smith TV series for Amazon. Wow, that was a mouthful. There's a lot. There's a lot to unpack there. Oh, okay. First series. There's a source material that is not the movie that we watched, right? I want to say yes, but I don't know. Okay, I was just curious if there was like if it was originally a series at one point. Secondly, um, I, it, it seems like an unlikely pairing, only because I haven't seen. I, I can't. I can't imagine um, being able to pick out how they cross over with like actors. I'm sure. I'm sure there's some sort of. I'm sure there's a way to get there, like a Kevin, you know, like a Kevin Bacon degrees of separation yeah, thing. Like, of- I'm sure you can get there. I just don't have it's not off the top of my head. I don't have it. But solo. That being s- solo. Oh God, they were yeah, both in it, weren't they? She voiced. She voiced. There it was. Sidekick. There it is. Great. L three. Be- whenever. I really like both of them. So I would watch something that they're in. Yeah, I'm not well, sure that I have any interest kind of in that I- particular property, but well, that's why I kind of brought it up because I. I was like, I feel like Anthony would be on board for a Phoebe Waller-Bridge show. Or 100%. Donald Glover Shore show. And we're getting a show with the two of them together? I think you could put either of their name and X, like, and anybody else, and I would have been on board. And then, But you put them together, and the yeah. anticipation rises. So let me see if this, this list sweetens the pot for you at all, okay? So they're starring in a new take on Mr. and Mrs. Smith. This is on The Wrap. This was from a few days ago. Sorry, sorry, I gotta pause you right there. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, original film, 1941. Go on. (laughs) Not much is known about the project except that it will be a TV series that will feature the two who co-created the series, along with Atlanta writer-producer Francesca Sloan, who will serve as showrunner. Amazon Studios is producing the new Regency, the studio behind the 2005 film that starred Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. So, the two of them taking ownership of this. I figured that would sweeten the pot for you. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. There were so I was just curious. Like, are are they? Do they commonly work together on things? I don't believe so. That's pretty awesome. Um, this was a press release from Amazon Studios chief Jennifer Salki. Talk about the dream team. Donald and Phoebe are two of the most talented creators and performers in the world. It's truly a dream for us, as it will be for our global audience to have these two forces of nature collaborating as a powerhouse creative team. Mr. and Mrs. Smith is an iconic property, and we can't wait to see how Donald, Phoebe, and Francesca make this their own. We're thrilled to be working with them and with such great partners at New Regency. Uh, it's expected to hit Amazon Prime Video in February of 2022. Cool. Nice. Um, I am curious. The 1941 Mr. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Um, Mrs. Smith? The Mr. symbol of the family Christmas. Is an Alfred Hitchcock film. Really? Re- yep. Uh, I'm seeing if I can find a synopsis of what this is. Um, I should probably just go to IMDb because the first place it brought me is Wikipedia, and I'm not going to read you things from there. <laughs> Mister. Listen, this isn't and... a research paper for fucking like, college or anything like that. It's okay for That's fair. Okay. Wait a minute. The plot thickens. Is it something there totally is a different? Mr. and Mrs. Smith in 2005. That's the one that we were talking about. There's a Mr. and Mrs. Smith TV series that was 13 episodes from 1996 to 1996. Uh, What is this one about? This is two spies are recruited by an intelligence agency. They pose as a married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, when they are on their missions. This is very odd punctuation. (laughs) It's hard to read. But anyway, so, okay, so I guess similar in that they are 
they po- okay, so they pose as a married couple, and the Mr. and Mrs. Smith that we saw, they were both spies independently and then realized that they're to get their that they that they're aren't they like are they out to get yes. each other? I don't remember how that works. So yes, they each work for two separate spy slash assassin you know, like hitman agencies. They are married. Neither of them knows what the other one does. And each of them is contracted for the same hit. And that's how they discover each other. And that whole thing was a setup because the two companies want to, like, no longer be tied together, even as loosely as that together. So they want Mm -hmm. this marriage annulled with a bullet. Right. Okay, so that's that's the 2005 Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yes. Not to be confused with the 2007 Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, why can't Stop. I? Mythith. The Mythith. Myth. See, I was having uh, trouble with strong traditional, and you're having trouble with Mrs. Smith. <laughs> the 2007 Mr. and Mrs. Smith, newly relocated to the suburbs, married assassins John and Jane Smith have reestablished their respective businesses, though the marital issues that plagued them in the past have returned. Is that this sounds like a sequel. That does sound like a sequel. Uh, it's 43 minutes. It stars uh, Fast and the Furious' Jordana Brewster <laughs> and Martin Henderson, who I'm not familiar with. I'm not familiar uh, with the Scrolling name. through really quickly, there are definitely a handful of that guys. Nice. Uh, is this like a... What is this? All right, anyway, so that exists. And now you're talking... Like a right, short so- film? Now, the 1941 Mr. and Mrs. Smith, directed by Hitchcock, Hitchcock. a couple who have been married for three years are shocked to learn that their marriage is not legally valid. (laughs) That does not seem like the same thing. I would like to point out that the poster for this movie is fantastic. I don't know if you are familiar with the structure and presentation of 40s movies posters, but they are all the same. I have some familiarity. There is a lot of overlap. They they are all the same. <laughs> Come on. And it's usually two people making faces in some fashion. <laughs> and in this particular one, they are in an embrace and they are either laughing or crying. Or both. Or both at the off-screen camera. Anyway, that's uh, that's that. So it doesn't seem like that is, is related at all. Um... So Which it sounds I, like a peak, it sounds like a peak dangerous for this show though. Is it, I, oh, for sure, only, like on account of who's involved, the subject matter means nothing to me. But well, and that, apparently that's kind of how I would do too because I saw I saw Mister and Smith's Smith show. I was like, oh, uh. it's like by co-creators Phoebe Waller Bridge and Donald Glover who will be starring. I was like, ah, oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I, had, <laughs> I just went on that same journey. <laughs> uh, I'm just curious, like for something like this to be like. To have a a weird forty minute sequel and a new <laughs> series coming out, like it would seem that it's built on something. But I mean, it does seem like a fun premise, right? Like just generally, sure. Like a little sure. cliched, but like fun. All right. Well, hey, we'll watch. We'll watch some of that. We'll we'll uh we'll we'll keep up with the Smiths post credits when that series comes out. <laughs> So, uh, speaking of 1940s movies, segue. Sure. Um, let me take you on a journey of my past week oh. of movie watching. Okay. <clears throat> it's been is, a this what Al, is this what Al has watched? This is what Al has watched this week. So, Friday night. Friday nights, we tend to do a little family movie night around here for whomever like that. happens to be around that day. Sure. You know. So, parents are like, oh, let's find a movie to watch. It's like, okay. What do you guys want to watch? I don't know. What's new on what's new on Netflix and stuff? No, sorry. I think the phrase was what's new on streaming. I said, okay, let me let me consult uh, the streams and let me tell you. I like that. I like that phrase. <laughs> yeah. I what's was like, let me consult tonight? the streams yeah. and I'll uh, <laughs> I'll let you yeah. know. <laughs> um so I was looking around, bored, nothing new seemed interesting, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I saw something that popped up. It's not new. Not new to me, but new to them. And I think you're going to be excited to hear about this because it's the first time I've seen it since we did it for the show a couple of years ago. And I introduced oh. my parents to Free Fire. No! Oh, oh, yes! <laughs> yes! As much as we're not allowed to uh, 
Hammer Cavill anymore. That movie <laughs> is so good. <laughs> Uh, he was good as Ord, which was just a ridiculous character and a ridiculous. We we need a new phrase though, like we 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 we're, 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 we've we've taken I mean, Hammer th- Cavill th- off the table. Didn't it become didn't it become hashtag toss a coin to your Witcher? Maybe. How who would have thought that when we started Hammer Cavill that that Henry Cavill would be the one who won us over? But I feel like we need yeah I know right it's pretty crazy but it seems like it needs to be some sort of hammer reference. Oh, got it. Cavils, gavels. <laughs> that's that's. <laughs> Hashtag cavil gavel. Hashtag cavils gavels. <laughs> Done. And to go uh, to coincide with that phrase is the picture of him reloading his arms from Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's a GIF with badly photoshopped gavels in his hands. <laughs> that's right. That's right. No, they're they're miniature army hammers. <laughs> Um, we got there. So yeah, I was like, you know what? Nice. You guys are gonna enjoy this movie. That's a good I move. Was like, I was like, it's a dumb action movie that you guys like. I said it's funny. It's dark, but it's funny. I said mm. it's just a bunch of idiots. They're like, well, what, what's it about? I was like, I mean, it's just about a bunch of idiots who shoot each other up in a, in a warehouse because they're right. the pettiest assholes in the world. I was like, right. but like you're gonna laugh at just how absurd. Uh. It is. Free Fire is such a gem. Yes. It's so much better than it has any right to. 100%. Yeah. Um, and I was delighted to rewatch it. It's been a while, obviously. <sighs> That's so good. They enjoyed it when they weren't sleeping through it. So, uh, sure. <laughs> Although I was sure. like, how do you sleep through this movie? It's so loud. It's 90 minutes long. It's so loud. There is so much gunfire. And- Nine, 90 minutes? Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith 2007 has that beat. <laughs> 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 well, sometimes too much less is not too much more. So, All right, so <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a Charmin Ultra commercial in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that was Friday. Uh, Success, Free Fire. Nice Saturday. Yep. All oh, right, um, I forgot that was just one night. That was just one night. That was Your one tremendous was. evening. Yeah, it sure was. Um, nice. <clears throat> my, um. So then Saturday night, we weren't doing anything. My mom's like, oh, I, she goes, I don't know if she saw something that, ref- that reminded her of it or whatever. She goes, I want to watch an old movie. And I was like, okay, like a particular one. And she goes, well, I think it's on HBO. And I was like, I don't know how you would know that. Although there are a lot of old movies on HBO Max. Like, yeah. All those like old Hitchcock and all that stuff. Well, because they have the, the Turner of- Classic stuff, right? Maybe. Uh, they also have a ton of old Japanese movies, like the, the yeah, like Akira I saw Kurosawa that. and stuff like that, which I actually would like to check out. We, we have to get into some of that stuff. I'm, I'm <clears> curious <throat> myself. Um, So we watched The Maltese Falcon on that was your 1940s movies. Second. Wow. We the Maltese Falcon on Saturday. Really good movie. Was it? Yeah. Awesome. I mean, a little bit too much of the, you know, yeah, you see, well, not that anyone did that bit of it, but just like the quick blah 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 blah. It's like okay, like you could take one breath in this scene, like you could take one, and like right. we could slow one or two of these scenes down just a touch, but like accounting for that, good movie, real good movie. Nice. I I want you to know that I just looked up the poster for this movie, and it is also the poster that I was previously looking at. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, yeah, no, I'm familiar. There are there are. A tremendous amount of similarities. It was very That's obvious that they were trying to outdo each other by doing the exact same. What is this guy doing with his two guns? Humphrey Bogart shooting everybody down on this poster. Oh wait, Humphrey Bogart has the two guns? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> it says hum- well, it says Humphrey well, Bogart, and then there's a picture of this man shooting two guns. So I would assume. Well, he so. does hold two guns, but I don't think he ever shoots the two guns. Someone else okay. is threatening to shoot him with the two guns. Arms. Classic. Classic. Point. So that's Saturday. That was Saturday. What else did you watch? So then we had Monday? Monday. Okay. Me and my sister watched the stunning conclusion to the To All the Boys I've Loved Before trilogy. All right. This is really I- weird. I watched all three of those movies this week. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What? Like, you mean like Free Fire, Maltese Falcon, and. 
It's all the boys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. No, I watched I watched all the boys movies and they were really fun. I enjoyed them. They were great. Yeah, I mean, I definitely mentioned cuz me and her yeah. Well, the, the last two years, me and her and one of her friends watched it. This year, it's just the two of us watched the third one. Um, but I know I mentioned them to you when we watched them the mm-hmm. last two years. The fact that we were watching them. So, um, yeah, no, they were they were fun movies. They were cute movies. Yeah, um, this, uh, they were super entertaining. I I will say I uh, we it started off with like we were looking for some like romantic like comedy type thing to watch on Valentine's Day. We watched one of those and then another one. And then we're like, we have to watch the other one now. <laughs> and we just I mean, they are super easy to watch. Like they're yeah, they're very they're fun. They're fun movies. Yeah, I love that um, style of movie. Yeah, uh, it. I remember reading something a couple years ago that basically like Netflix is the only place that they make those movies anymore. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Which I guess is probably true. Outside it of like be. the cheesy cheesy er versions on like Hallmark type oh, shit, like sure, movie. right. Right. Yeah, it's got that. It does have like a. It has a '90s rom com vibe to it. Yeah, it's that style, and I'm I'm all about that. I'll watch those movies forever. So that's yeah. that's cool. Oh, the, I I believe the books were written in the 2000 teens. So mm. I was just I was shocked to see at the end of this movie. I just assumed there was going to be another one next year, and there was going to be them in college. And it seems like that's not the case. Yeah, it seems like it's over. It's well, the last over, book man. was written like. That this one was was written like four years ago. So yeah, well, I guess if somebody needs a few more bucks, they'll they'll probably make another one. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, no, that was kind of fun. So yeah, oh, so there we, is we, also we have... there's a Netflix show where they like review, like they like they, like talk about some show that's on Netflix. Like it's like David mm-hmm. Spade and a couple other people, and they interview cast members. Don't watch it. Um, that's that's not where this is going. It's real bad. Uh, it's hard to watch. It's painfully. It's it's just agonizing. I, I he doesn't can't. seem like a natural interviewer. It's hard. It's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> it almost took away from the movies. Oh wow! That's how bad it was. Um, yikes! It's like something unrelated <laughs> lowering the score of a movie. That's what was happening. <laughs> um. Yeah. So anyway, three movies I've mentioned so far. Three wildly different types of movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you were all over the place. I like it. Um. And then I watched Heat on Tuesday for the show, which we will be talking about in a short while. And then last night I watched the new live action Mulan. Oh, cool. Cool. So now we've both seen that. Okay. I, I thought you said you'd seen it, but I couldn't remember. Yeah. I just figured we'd get to it today. So. Uh, live action Mulan, not the animated movie. That's pretty much all I can say about it. It wasn't very good. It was fine. <laughs> it was fine, just fine. Fine's the right word. Yeah, solid six. <laughs> the, but the is, unfortunately, six trying to be a seven. I think that's yes. this is where the problem comes in. Yes, because it's a six with disappointment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Six with a side of disappointment. Yeah. I'll take the number six. Side of disappointment, please. That's right. That's, <laughs> that's it. Certainly. It's like if you were to order the Gorg- Gorgonzola fries and just get fries. <laughs> Listen, on on their own, they're they're still pretty good. I guess fries on their own are at least a seven, right? Well, they're Unless they're like fries. soggy. They're, they're waffle, waffle fries. fries? That's yeah, right. I, I first of all, I was gonna say I for sure have. Yeah, you've told me that. Explicitly. And they're then these and are. Two, eight. I sent you a picture. <laughs> these are eight. These are eights. Any day of the week. Uh, say gorgonzola. even without the gorgonzola butter cheese whatever sauce. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's also you know waffle fries with like rosemary and. Like, <sighs> Um, like red pepper flakes and all that. I'm so hungry. (laughs) (laughs) So I ate like right before I came down here, so I'm good right now. (laughs) I can talk about gorgonzola fries as long as I want. Fair enough. Um, So yeah, anyway, quite a week of movies. Yeah, Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Here's So, all right, doing it live. Do you have any interest in covering Mulan on this show? We can do that. I I don't really want to. I was just curious if you did. (laughs) I don't like I, mean, I said. Looking, here's your review. Mulan, next... a six. That's it. I was it. gonna say, <laughs> if you're um, if you're just looking for an open week in the next like three weeks where the movie is still fresh in our mind, where we can just talk about that without having to like have watched the movie presently, we sure. can do it. But yeah, no, I would I don't have a clamoring uh, need to talk about it. I would consider doing a Mulan episode if it were we watched the animated one and we're doing an episode on both. Here's I the mean, thing. Sure. Here's my take on my hot take on Mulan. 
the act, the live action one that came out this year. If you were to take the awesome animated movie Mulan and remove all of the great things about it and then put real people in, this is what you get. Like you they took you take the music out, you take the comic relief out, you Most swap you swap the character. You swap the gorgeous animation with with gorgeous live action. Uh, it looked it, it does, looks it looked very good. pretty. It good. Uh, but you 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 are lowering the score by doing this. You're taking a you're take, I I believe they took away the heart of Mulan. It's funny because that's what I said last night when we were done watching the movie. I said it was the taste of betrayal. <laughs> no, because like my 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 dad was like, oh, that was pretty good. I was like, it was fine. I was like, it's the same movie just without the heart and. Yeah, you know, he's like, he's like, well, you know, it's not going to be like it's funny or whatever. I was like, no, I'm not talking about humor. I'm talking about like you end up caring about those characters. Like you don't really care about any of these because they don't like other than Mulan, they don't give you an opportunity to care. Yeah, about them. and like that's right. You care about all of them, and they get. I mean, they start as all fairly one note, and they begin to become more well rounded people. But like, you still get enough time with each of them to like develop some sort of preference to some aspect of them. When they start to soften, right? Yeah. No, I'm 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 with you. Uh, yeah. I was I was excited although, to watch it, and then I watched it, and I was like, man. Eh. Although this one did have Donnie Yen kicking ass, so that was cool. Sure. Uh, we are watching one other thing together, and that is our weekly roundup on Wandavision. <laughs> uh, I don't think I mentioned this last week, but I know I meant to. I don't think I actually got it out on the episode. Mm. You know, what I've been finding to be delightful about this show. What's up? Because it's a fun, well, it by degrees fun. At times it's a little bit dark, right? But whatever. Hmm. Um, at times it's a little, little bit dark. At times it's pitch black. <laughs> sure, but, but you know what I meant. Like, you know. So we have a fun little comic book uh, TV show, right? Uh huh. I've been watching them like Saturday morning cartoons. Ah. Oh. Because Gold. Friday night when I get home from work, a little tired, jump in the shower, sure. have some dinner. Have some adult beverages, fire up a movie with the family, and have some popcorn. Definitely too tired to watch it when I'm done with that. Right. Wake up Saturday morning, have no responsibilities, put on the TV while in bed, and I watch WandaVision. Nice. I like this. This is a great. This is a great way to start your weekend. It is. That's awesome. Oh man, it they, they it's been it's been really good. I they it's I like how they like they introduced the weird in episode one. And the confusion and the dark side of it. A little bit. Not too much. No hint at what it actually is. But they introduced it. Episode 2, a little bit more. Episode 3, a little bit more. Episode 4, a little bit more. Like, they're building on making it more and more intensely creepy and weird as it goes on. And dark. And it's been evolving. It's been evolving, yeah. too. Because it starts off as, like, Twin Peaks-type weird. Like, existential dread to now, like, like deep like analysis of like the soul and the psyche and right. You know what it means to be like enslaved. It goes, it's going like full blown, like matrix style, like in a prison of the mind for your own good, or maybe not, or just, right. we're going to fill you with candy and, you know, with cotton candy and, and dreams and hope that you don't notice what's going on around you while we deal with the moral dilemma of whether or not that's Okay. Because obviously it's not okay in something like the Matrix where your body is being plundered for its energy. In this case, it's to fill out the fantasies and grief fulfillment of a person. And maybe it's not hurting you, but it seems to be wearing on your psyche for sure. And also these other people didn't ask for this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, I... Th th so we got a couple of really cool things in this one. Um... In particular, I I really I liked I like her brother being in play, but it being the Quicksilver from uh, the X Men universe, I think that's kind of fun. Uh, there was a joke about uh, with the phrasing "kick ass" involved, and I thought that was really silly. Uh, there was a reference to "kick ass," and it was like something about her brother not being who he is, and it because the actor that plays her actual brother in the MCU is the same actor that plays Kick-Ass, and I think that's really silly that they brought that up. <laughs> uh, then there was the whole... When she got... What, Vision... Oh, Vision breaking through the barrier and the intensity of him getting ripped apart. Like, 
that was like peak MCU flick where like it's all going down Mm -hmm. and then making the hex grow really, really big, really fast. And then obviously getting a thrilling little, yeah, getting like a thrilling little chase scene as like people trying to outdrive the hex and all that. And that was some don't. That was really cool. Uh, You, you, you do have your classic like MCU and every other movie. um, That one government guy who is just the worst who is for some reason in charge. Like you have that. It does start to, I was thinking about this the other day after watching that episode, because it's, it is starting to wear on me that trope of like, Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's real life, right? Because we kind of ascribe that leaders tend to be smarter than us and like the good ones are, but bad ones, not necessarily. And there are more of those than we'd like to admit or, or it, that is admitted to us. Yeah. So, like, maybe it's not unrealistic, but like, I know we all aspire to and hope that someone in that position is going to be good at their job. Um, but I find it more compelling when characters like that make the wrong decisions, but you can at least understand why. Like, right. I get the logic. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. I don't need, mean you necessarily need an exposition dump, but like, when you get the logic and. Mm-hmm. When you see something, a character like that acting totally illogically, like this has been a fight that I've seen and partaken in, whatever, like stuff like in episode eight of Star Wars, like a big crux of it is people not liking the whole thing with Holdo and that leading to the insurrection by Poe and all that. And it's like, no, you get why all the people there make the decisions they make. You may Mm -hmm. disagree with them, but. Because someone does a dumb thing doesn't make it bad writing. If the underpinning of the logic is logical, like if it's, oh, I can understand why everyone made these choices and they are human and that's why someone makes the wrong choice and that makes for compelling storytelling, right? Yeah. May work for you, may not, but like it's a functional bit of narrative. When a character is just an asshole for being an asshole's sake and makes bad choices for plot reasons, that is becoming very tiresome to me. And yeah. as good as this show has been, that has been the case so far. Now, we've seen that there's been some nods to the fact that there's secret information, maybe. Because Darcy, when she hacked whatever, we got a little snippet of some yep. of what Hayward knows, but we don't have the full picture yet. Right. So it's possible that we will get uh, greater context. Yeah, the I've, I've deferred like to, to be like, if, if you're going to give me something later, okay, then this is fine. Yes. And they, they've given the hint that they will. But if they that's don't, like, and he yeah. just is this way, then that's that's not good. It's getting a sigh from me right now because like, uh, but I yeah. know that there's something else. So I'm like, I'm not going to judge it until I see the whole picture. But like, I'm losing my patience on that one small thing. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. Uh, now, we just have to circle back one last time to Vision reaching the ends of the town where everything is static and yes. people aren't moving. It was a terrifying scene. Then, yes. then he meets Catherine Hahn's character in her car at the edge of the hex. Uh, are we giving her an Oscar is the question. <laughs> like, that was it an amazing scene. Well, she does. She's asked to do a lot of different things like back to back to back. Yeah. And she nails every one of them. Yeah. I think she is a very talented actress. Yeah, she is. And I want to see her in like, this is like, this is Vince Gilligan level. Like she is a very <laughs> I, funny person. Yeah. Cause she goes big, right? Like think of yeah. like, her as Alice in Step Brothers. Like yeah, she yeah. can go big and we've seen a bit of like the quiet understated. I we haven't seen her go full dramatic other than snippets. Right. Now in this. But yeah, I would I would sign her up for we can put her on our list of Gilligan-esque comedic actors we do in a drama for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely hired. Hired. <laughs> uh but she's ki- she's killing it. I can't wait. I I love this. I love looking forward to tomorrow uh where I'm going to get to watch it again. So it's pretty awesome. Uh Oh, it doesn't look like we have much news I, I, in nuggets left. What do you want? I was going to say, my last thought on, on the, the WandaVision thing is it was it's odd that they skipped over the 90s, kind of. Yeah, they did it like quickly. Because this was Malcolm in the middle, was what this they were was, doing. That's what I thought. Uh, it felt it, that's the 90s, isn't it? 
I think technically it started in 2000. Oh, did it? Oh, now I mean, like it does feel like that fringe. Yeah, time. it it did start in 2000. Um, but what the 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 big thing though is, as much as it's kind of on that fringe, and it has like pre 9 11 sensibilities, which is like odd for a show that doesn't have anything to do with like say terrorism or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. There is still an important distinction that shows up in a lot of media around that time. Um, but what is interesting at this time was that it was the first of these shows that single cam, right? Right. Which like typically when you think historically sitcoms are all multicam, which mm-hmm. kind of largely doesn't work for me. Although for me, it's bigger, the cadence and the delivery of the canned laugh track or, or real audience laugh track, whatever still. Right. I don't yeah. think this type of show had that. Right. So. Uh, I'm not really. I, I wasn't too familiar with Malcolm in the Middle, but yeah, I I agree with you that it does it does seem like they they rapidly went over that '90s gap, and it seems because it did seem that that was my guess. Having not watched that show uh, and watching the intro, that was my guess at what they were getting at. So I'm glad that you. I said thought the same so too. Thing. I thought so too. But what I found helpful after I've watched these is the Seppin Wall recap on Rolling Stone. He highlights what each of these shows is. Oh, okay. That's cool. And so there was some greater context in there, especially he did a, a, an interesting little history on the whole like battle between multicam and single cam in there, like historically. So like mm-hmm. I found that to be interesting context because I didn't know about all that. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's cool. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to see what they do next. Um, I think I think I saw right before we got on here that they sh- they've been doing a little like like promo like videos before each episode just to oh. kind of get you like a, a taste for what's coming. I believe the theme of the next one is supposed to be, and this is kind of what I assumed once I saw where this, this timeline of this one was, is uh, that it's going to be modern family ish. Okay. So I cool. don't know about the other part of the storyline, but that part of it seems to be like, it's going to go probably modern family, which makes it, that's like kind of the defining sitcom of the, the of that like, generation. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. That's true. But yeah, cool. Um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see tomorrow, or for you, Saturday. Uh, okay. Al, what are you reading, or what will you be reading? <laughs> so, it's, yeah, what my kind of postscript on this whole news and notes and such of the day? Why are you eating that wire? Um, <laughs> I don't know. Losing my mind. Bit. I am. I was. I, I am hungry. I wasn't. I wasn't kidding before. <laughs> I, I well, won't actually digest the wire, but it's fine. I was going to say, when we uh, do that break that we definitely don't ever do right before the movie recording, maybe grab a sure. snack. That's probably a good idea. Uh, <laughs> I try not uh, to eat so, after eight, though, so it's. I'm not going <laughs> to. Um, I, um, I've been kind of getting the itch finally to start reading again because I've been on a very long hiatus since that year in which I knocked down like 40 novels. So. 40 novels? I don't think I've read 40 novels, Al. <laughs> That's well, we've, we've talked about this before. Um, that's from like right before or right around the start of the show. There was that year where I legitimately, I knew it was a bunch. And then I went back and looked at all of what I had read. Right. Because it was all on like the Kindle app on my phone and, and the number was 40 ish. So, mm. um, yeah, I haven't really read. I think I've read one book since then. Okay. Um, and so. I've been getting the itch finally, and I've been trying to decide what I want to dip my toes in the water with. And while well, deciding what I wanted to dip my toes in the water with, I bought all eight novels of the Expanse series. Oh, <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, basically dove into the deep end. Um, it's funny because I was looking around online. It's like, oh, like I know the. I was like, I figured there might be some like set or something like that, and mm-hmm. there kind of wasn't really. There was like. One that had like the first three books or whatever. I was like, no, like, I want all of them. Like whether it be hardcover, or, like paperback, whatever. Like just yeah, like, give me everything that exists. Give me all your expanse books. Right. Um, now, a little awkward because the ninth and final one is coming out at some point later this year. Um, but that's okay because I didn't technically actually get the set. Um, but I bought all eight of them in paperback and. Well, at first I was going to buy them on my phone because I was like, oh, you know, whatever. I can maybe periodically read a page or three during the course of my day, like while I'm eating lunch or something like that. Sure. But I didn't really love my options there. And so I was looking on, like, Amazon for, like, the books themselves. And it was pretty expensive. But, like, I was like, okay, well, it is eight books, whatever. 
But then I was like, you know what? Fuck this. If I'm going to get this like this, it's not even going to come into a, like the format exactly that I want. Like if I'm going to just go buy a bunch of paper bags, like, let me buy it from like an actual bookstore because sure. like, that'd be cool. And I found that there's one like right down the street from my, where my brother lives okay, and that they can order online through that. And they're like, oh yeah, like if we don't have the books in here, like we have the ability to order them and get them in less than a week. So whatever. And they were all on there. So I was like, yeah, let's do it. And crazy enough, it come out cheaper than it will on Amazon. Mm, mm-hmm. So I was like, "Yeah, no, this is an old because yeah, I get that's to awesome." Of a, like a little like bookstore and everything. Like it's not even like Barnes Noble; it's like an actual little bookstore. So yeah, I'm excited what, to read those. That that's great. When when you do your reading, are you like a? Do you like sit down for long periods of time and read a chunk, or are you just kind of like taking bites throughout the day? Um, it depends on, yeah, it depends like now with the way like my schedule is I'll probably have to make time to read mm. some or like do the whole, I'm going to give myself 15 minutes at the end of the day type of thing to do it. Um, I'm a fast reader. So, you know, 15 minutes, knock out 15 pages or whatever. So, um, but like, I'll probably end up well, like after I get these, like on a Saturday morning after watching WandaVision, I might read for an hour. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have uh when you when you read do you feel the need to finish a chapter or are you totally fine with just stopping where you're at? Um if I am setting aside time to read, I like to finish chapters. Mm-hmm. If I know that I'm just trying to squeeze in some reading while I have 2 seconds, I just like to generally finish like pages or paragraphs. Gotcha. Gotcha. I think one of the things that holds me back from reading more is I feel that anytime I start, I need to finish the chapter. And I put like this unnecessary stress on like there. But I feel like if I didn't do that, I would be able to read so many more things. Well, you got to know what you're you got to take a look at what you're reading and get an expectation for like, because if something that has short chapters, you can commit to the chapter thing. If Mm -hmm. it's a book that has all the chapters are 30 or 40 pages long. Yeah. Obviously, that's more of a burden if you're going to stick to you feel like you need to. So to me, I, I've always found like, and I know I've talked about this before, I <laughs> I tend to read them in like, oh, well, let me read these eight books from this author, right? Where like I sink mm-hmm. fully into the voice of the author. And it actually makes it hard for me to read the next thing after that because I the voice is jarring in my head. But mm-hmm. once I get into the rhythm of the way someone writes, I get a good feel for when pauses can feel natural. Like what? Yeah. Like when you could stop, I get that. That makes sense. Similar to like, if you're watching like a TV show or a movie, like, you know, like, Oh, this is a good moment to pause and go to the bathroom or whatever. Yeah. You know? Cause like, I, I don't feel like I'm going to be breaking the, like the narrative. Like there's a, there was already a natural pause here. Like I usually get right. a feel for that pretty quickly with reading. Oh, so. yeah, I've got, I've got my time in there with movies. So I know exactly when I can pause at all times. Yeah. So, like, you know, but I, I would can say see why you would the, get that. How you would get the that same way in a book. thing? You know, when when someone completes a thought, when a dialogue ends or whatever, like those are the times to cut off if you're not going to be able to finish it. In chapters. So. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, I should get on board with this. With this, I feel like I would read more if I did that. Yeah, it's hard when you have to be like, oh, I can only read in like hour long chunks or half hour long chunks. Cause I really feel like I've got to be compelled to finish a chapter. Like, it it can be stressful, and reading should be anything but like. Right, right. So, yeah, I would say just find what works for you. To me, like, yeah, I, if I have to put, like, a word on it, like, or, like, like an actual specific, like, thought on it, I would say I try and really finish it after, like, when natural transitions happen at the end of a conversation, at the end of kind of a thought process, at the end of a, a specific sequence of events before the next sequence of events picks up, even if it's not a heartbreak in a chapter, you know, it's, hey, you know, I made myself breakfast and I sat down and ate breakfast. And then I was deciding to go to work. Well, that's the time to pause, right? You know, yeah. let's leave off before he gets to work, you know? <laughs> right, right. Cool. Well, uh, keep us posted on how those books are going. Yeah, I got to get them first. So sure. uh, hopefully I'll have them. I think they were all like scheduled to be one to five days. So I think that would be Saturday. So nice. if I could start reading this weekend, it'd be great. Cool. Al, you want to get some fun of games? Sure. All right. So this week I have something different. I couldn't think of something um, that was like directly related to the movie that we did. So I 
started going to down some different avenues, right? And I came across this one. This is actual trivia for you. And okay. we're going to do uh this is a stupid BuzzFeed trivia quiz. Do you think you can get at least 5 out of 10 on this random 90s movie trivia quiz? Okay. So before we get started, do you think you can get a 9 out of uh, 5 out of 10, a 9 out of 10? That's a that's shooting for the stars here. Do you think you can get a 5 out of 10 on a random 90s movie trivia quiz? Do you think that's something that would I mean, it's going to be really do. dependent on which movies, I guess. But yeah, I think I could. I okay. generally have a lot of movie knowledge and trivia knowledge in general. So, Okay. Who did Steven Spielberg originally want for the role of Dr. Alan Grant in Jurassic Park? Kevin Costner, Harrison Ford, or Tom Hanks? Hmm. My guess is going to be Costner. Okay. Uh, the answer is Harrison Ford. Okay. During a special no. screening of the 30th anniversary Raiders of the Lost Ark, Spielberg told the crowd he had offered him the role first and that he turned it down. I mean, I'm not surprised. Obviously, they work together in Indiana Jones and all. Which of these facts is true about The Nightmare Before Christmas? Tim okay. Burton didn't direct it. Disney delayed the release of it because of Hocus Pocus. Danny Elfman does the speaking voice for Jack Skellington. Is it which of these is true? Yes. I'm going to say they delayed it for Hocus Pocus. Uh, no. Tim Burton did not direct the movie. The movie is based on a story and characters that Tim created, but the film is directed by Henry Selick. Tim did produce the film, though. I believe there's some there is something with this movie in particular where like Burton was able to do something else, something big, whether it be like a Batman or like not, maybe it was Batman Returns. I'm not really sure. I don't know what, what years it was, but like, I think he had something else that came up that he had the opportunity to do. So he did that. And like all of his DNA is in the movie, but he did not actually direct it. So was that maybe that was Edward Scissorhands? Oh, maybe I'm not sure. Or I'm not sure. Also though, is Nightmare Before Christmas a nineties action movie? A nineties action movie. Isn't that what you said? Or is it just 90s? No, no, just a 90s movie. Oh, just I don't know why 90s. I heard it as 90s actually. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Which of these facts is true about Scream? It was originally called Scary Movie. They originally wanted Heather Locklear to play Gail Weathers. Denise Richards was forced to drop out of the role of Casey Becker after Drew Barrymore wanted that role instead of the role of Sydney. <sighs> I'm going to go with the Heather Locklear one. Uh, this is a silly one. I, so, so far, I'm, I'm actually three for three on this, even though I can't prove it. Um, <laughs> but the movie was originally called Scary Movie. Okay. Uh, the like idea behind title, Scream was that it was intended to be a satire of the slasher is. film, right? And, like, and calling it Scary Movie was leaning into that heavily. But it kind of plays... I feel like it kind of plays on the line a little bit, like because it is a little bit. Of, it is a thriller slasher, but it is obviously like self-aware. Mm -hmm. So it's funny. But yes, the original it was originally called Scary Movie. Which actor was originally cast as Juliet opposite Leonardo DiCaprio in Romeo and Juliet? Alicia Silverstone, Kate Winslet, Natalie Portman. Kate Winslet. Natalie Portman was forced to drop out of the movie after executives at Fox saw the rehearsals and thought she looked way too young to be playing Leonardo DiCaprio's love interest. Wait, it's Romeo and Juliet. She's like 12. <laughs> I don't <Yeah>. understand. <laughs> also, oh, I thought maybe I'm misremembering this. I actually said that. That was the first one I didn't say, like, I guess, or I think I could have swore. I listened to the armchair with Claire Danes. Mm -hmm. And I could have swore she said that they wanted DiCaprio and Winslet because they had just done Titanic or were about to do Titanic. Whatever. Oh, that's that's funny. I, I could have swore that she said something that she wasn't the first choice. Or I mean, it, DiCaprio at, went hemmed and hawed over it. So at, at the end of the I, day, I, this like, is I thought I had the answer. <laughs> it's a buzz. It's a BuzzFeed quiz. So no, I mean, uh, listen, uh, I, that's not to say that they. The, I, I doubt they're lying about Natalie Portman having been up for it. You know? Right, but maybe two of those answers were accurate. That's what that's kind yeah. of what I'm getting at. <laughs> Which of these like I was facts led astray with a trick question? <laughs> right. Which of these facts is true about Drive Me Crazy? It's based on the novel Wish You Were Dead. Jennifer Love Hewitt turned down the role of Nicole twice. They changed the title of the movie because of the Britney Spears song. 
I have never heard of that movie before, so let's go with C. <laughs> okay. uh, correct. They changed the title of the movie because of Britney Spears. The movie was originally called Next to You, but it was renamed after Britney's You Drive Me Crazy was added to the film's soundtrack. <laughs> Which of these facts is true about The Lion King? Can You Feel the Love Tonight was almost cut from the film. The Wildebee Stampede scene took Disney CGI animators 13 months to complete. The movie was a prestige film, and because because of it was animated by Disney animators... What? The movie was a prestige, was a prestige film, and because of it was animated by Disney animators A-Team. I mean, that's true, I feel like, but I don't think that's what they're getting at for this answer. I was going to go with B, because I remember watching some little like featurette about like the making of that and what an incredible amount of time it took to do uh, that scene. So I'm going to go with that one. I would have also said that uh, we are wrong. It says, can you feel the love tonight? It was almost cut from the movie. The song was removed from the movie because it did not fit the film's father and son theme. The song was put back in the film after Elton John saw an early cut of the film and made it clear that it needed to be in. <laughs> so wait, <laughs> so Elton John had final cut of this movie. It would appear so. <laughs> Which if actor? You put that, if you if you had phrased it that way, I would have laughed and not taken that answer. Right? Like, oh yeah, Elton John had final cut of Lion King. Yeah, <laughs> <not> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah you did. <laughs> Apparently. Which actor was originally cast as Catwoman in Batman Returns? Annette Bening, Jennifer Connelly, Bridget Fonda. Jennifer Connelly, right? Hmm. I said Jennifer Connelly got to be way too young, right? Like at that time. I think so. Yeah. Right. Although, well, because she was in what's it called at that same time, right? Or a year before the we, the one we just did a few months ago, The Rocketeer. Yeah. Was that the same time? Yeah. It was within a year or two. Yeah, um, they're they're pretty close. She's so young in that. Yeah, that's true. I'm gonna go with. Correct. And that Benning was forced to drop out after she found out she was pregnant and was replaced by Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, I mean, they just, they're similar in age, aren't they? So, like, that made more sense. I, I just, I need the audience to know that I appreciate every time Al does not skip a beat when I say, when I say Pfeiffer. Because I've done it at least a hundred times on this show. But you know the origin yeah. of Pfeiffer, I would assume. I- I don't, but oh, I know that it's I've a key and peel skit, so. and it's pretty great. <laughs> uh, okay. The thing is, I think like like my mom has done that for years. Like she's always That's found great. the P. Like well, because like honestly, like we'll often call it like pee pneumonia. Or so nice. Like, we've always like, <laughs> accentuated that sort of. I thing. like that. I like that. I think everyone does. Don't don't they? <laughs> we- <laughs> everyone should. Which of these facts is true about Clueless? Angelina Jolie was one of the first choices to play Cher. Coolio almost passed on the th- on them using Rollin' with the Homies in the movie. Amy Heckerling, who wrote and directed the movie, originally p- pitched Clueless as a TV series for Fox. I think it's that one. Correct. Uh, Amy pitched the show with the title No Worries. Disney originally envisioned Beauty and the Beast as what? A live-action movie, a darker, more romantic, and non-musical animated movie. Sorry. A darker, more dramatic, non-musical animated movie. As an almost three-hour animated musical movie that would be pretty faithful adaptation of La Belle et La Bette. I don't know how to actually pronounce the the sh- the, the carrot. The bit? Bit? B-E-T-E, <laughs> but there's a, there's a little hat on the E. Passenger? Passenger? Um, I, I'm going to go with B. Yes. As a darker, more dramatic and non-musical animated movie, a 20 minute reel of the version of the movie, which consisted of sketches and was set with temporary vocals was shown to then chairman of Walt Disney studies, studies, studios, Jeffrey Katzenberg, who decided to kill it and start the film over. Yeah. I think I had heard something about that. The gift they chose for that is the beast swaying his head and putting his hand in his face, uh, his head in his hand. It's really, it's really funny. Which of these facts is true about Titanic? The iconic line "I'm the king of the world" was always in the script, contrary to rumors. James Cameron, what a weird option. James Cameron was very much against having "My Heart Will Go On" in the movie. James Cameron had to be convinced by the studio to cast Leonardo DiCaprio as Jack. Mm. 
I'm gonna go with A. Uh, no. Uh, near, far, wherever you are, my heart will go on. Was not supposed to be in the movie, according to James Cameron. Yep. I, I James- mean, that's let's say that's funny because like that that song is partially responsible for how big that movie is. Yeah. Uh, James Cameron thought the movie was too epic and didn't need a pop song in it. After listening to the demo that Celine recorded, he decided to put it in. It's a pretty iconic song, and I wouldn't even have to say that. Oh, Al, unfortunately, you got four out of ten, so you didn't know a lot about these. But honestly, who cares? There are more important things. There, the more important thing is that you enjoyed watching these classic '90 movies. That's an assumption. That's an assumption that it's making. Uh, I mean, they're not wrong. I enjoyed watching them, but that's an assumption. What do you say? What do you say? Something new. Something new. We're going to do something different this week, Al. You ready? Okay. Let's get into our flick of the week. (laughs) (laughs) Heat, released in 1995, rated R with a two hour and 50 minute runtime. Your IMDb synopsis. A group of professional bank robbers start to feel the heat from police when they unknowingly leave a clue at their latest heist. I'll be honest with you, I read that synopsis moments before we started recording, and I was like, is that what happened? I and don't then, think that's what happened. That is kind of what happened if the clue is the word slick. <laughs> and also the fact that, totally separate from the main narrative, someone just decides to say, hey, I know someone, a guy who might know a guy. That's right. And then he says, really, that, that, that and then he no says slick, and Bacina goes, oh! <laughs> Which also, that is really thin evidence to be going thin. on. Very thin. Uh, yeah. Uh, Al, give, let's, uh, give me a tweet length. What do you got? What's your review? A long, slow burn vehicle for bad and disgruntled people to terrorize <laughs> LA. A tale as old as time, but told well, and performed ably, culminating in a sensational chase before Lord of the Rings and 7.5 out of 10. <laughs> Lord of the Rings ending. Not to be confused with Lord of the Rings beginning. Heat, like any classic 90s crime drama, is full of that guys, void of chemistry, and burns slow, but rarely bright enough. 7 out of 10. Okay, I mean, kind of in the same ballpark there. Yeah, it's it. Uh, it's good. It's good. It, not, not to be confused a, with, not to be confused movie. with fine. It's good. No, it's 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 better than fun. It's good. It's, it's good. good. Um, it could be way better. I have to say, I do wonder if I was twenty five to thirty years old watching this movie in nineteen ninety five, if this might not have been like my departed. Oh, like yeah, like, this would have totally been your jam for sure. I mean, see, that's the thing. Going into this, I know so many people that have talked about this movie as being like, "Oh, Heat! You gotta see Heat! It's so good." It's like the basis for so many things. I'm like, I, I, I get it. Um, and I can see that being the case. Uh, it's not that for me, but it's 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 good. I, I, I think my, my, my biggest problem with it is you almost sound defeated to like admit that it's good. I don't know. <laughs> I do. And here's the here's the thing. And this is going to be a very unpopular opinion, I think. Um, maybe not with you, but I feel like with the audience, it may be. Um, I feel like I feel like I, I feel like Mike's gonna have a problem with this statement. I'm not sure, but you could you can <laughs> let me know. Uh, it took me a while. I wasn't sure where I stood on it. Uh, it was during this movie that watching this was like, oh, this movie actually has a decent story. It's actually executed fairly well. Oh, I don't think I like Al Pacino or Robert De Niro. I just don't think like I just, like them as actors. I don't think they're very just, good. I do think that both of them have become overhyped much in the same way that this movie has. Sure. I do think that if you go back early in their careers, they both have some really excellent performances. Like Pacino in the Godfather. Pacino, Pacino in particular, I would agree. I, I don't know that I've ever really been blown away by De Niro. I've just been told so often that he's been great. Well, the thing is, I've never seen all of Godfather 2 still. Uh-huh. So I'm willing to withhold judgment there. It seems um, like we're gonna have to do those for the show. Yeah. Um he was good in Raging Bull. That movie is so fucking overblown to me. I and uh-huh. like 
I'm sure there are like more sophisticated movie critics that are tisk tisking me, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, the thing is, to me, going Gaga over black and white cinematography, I just don't get it. Sure. Because there's a reason we left it behind. It's because it's not the gold standard, and it hasn't been for 60 years. Mm-hmm. Um, not not to say that movie isn't shot well. It's just like okay, but you could have done it in color. <laughs> but why? <laughs> like I've seen other movies that are in color that like have like gorgeous like cinematography and all that. Like like Reggie Bull is fine. It's a yeah. it's a fine movie. It's solid. I get why some people like it better than I do. Mm. To me, I mean. Man, you, how many times have there been movies that I like better than you that you're like, or like, fucking, let's talk about The Sopranos. You're like, I hate every one of these people. Yeah. You want to watch something where you just fucking loathe everyone on screen every single second? Go watch Raging Bull. Now, no, it's only two and a half that's, hours. That's the point. I don't want to watch that. <laughs> no, that's that's my, like, it's, well, the whole point I'm, I'm making is like, sure, I hated everyone on The Sopranos, but like, there were things I liked about them, like, from an entertainment standpoint. And sure. There was compelling storylines, which you can do across a long television. Now, maybe you want to say it's too much. Maybe there's a happy medium between two and a half hours of Raging Bull and 60 hours of Sopranos, whatever. Right, right. right. But, God, I just fucking hated everyone on screen every <laughs> single second of Raging Bull. Like, so, like, there's no redeeming quality to any of them. They're yeah. terrible people. Like, uh, whatever. Uh, so, but, like, so, like... De Niro and Pesci are very good in the movie. Like they are. Like they're mm-hmm. they're good. Um, and I've never seen uh, Taxi Driver. Uh, I've seen little bits of it, and that's really what's known as the standout role of De Niro's. Career, right. right. I and I I have seen that, and I I thought it was very good. Uh, but I did see it a long time ago. I'd be curious on a rewatch how I'd feel about it. But yes, I would agree that watching that. That was the. I feel like that's the only time. Like I feel like it's De Niro and Taxi Driver, and then De Niro and everything else. But yeah, I mean that might not been, be fair because I, mean, I haven't seen his entire catalog. But that's how I feel with what I've seen. I mean, he's fine in Goodfellas. He's but he's playing a De Niro. But he's playing De Niro. Niro. Yeah. Um. But I, I do think both of those guys on the merits in like the seventies were great actors. Mm-hmm. I think everything since then has been different versions of going way over the top. Or kind of mailing it in. Um, sure. So, yeah, both of them have become overhyped because they haven't put it on screen for us in decades. Yeah, it, it feels very much like De Niro has one speed, and that is De Niro. And Pacino has two speeds, and that is Ua and Mumbling. <laughs> Like this, <laughs> I would say uh, between the two of them, Pacino was better in this movie for sure. I, I, I completely agree. He actually he showed range. Like there was range in that character, uh, and 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 his character, yeah, his character, like was I think his character was far better written as well. Uh, even though yes. even though the two characters are sub- are meant to be like two sides of the same coin, one of them is written better. Yeah, they're supposed to be Batman and. Jo- I mean, you can see. Like, if you want to talk about movies that are, like, clearly, like, tipped off by this. Like, The Dark Knight is clearly inspired by this. Mm-hmm. Um, like, heavily. Um, yeah. Just, like, big big picture stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, including including joke, Guy in Bank. The, the <laughs> guy in Bank in Dark Knight. William Fickner playing basically the same character <laughs> in <Bank. laughs> Both of whom got robbed. Um, yeah. But, uh... And, and shot died <laughs> it's, it's not clear if the one in the dark knight died i think he's actually fine it's not clear that he died i would not assume he's fine <laughs> no i feel like he's fine i mean if he well, died of anything it's up. a heart of it it's a heart attack thinking that that was a grenade that was going to explode in his mouth but <laughs> but doesn't the bank blow up when they drive out of it no or collapse or something no i don't remember it's been a while since i've seen the opening scene but regardless um but yeah, the they spend equal amounts of time on the Joker and Batman, and they give you reasons for their motivation, reasons for why they are the way they are, right. reasons for why the two of them are connected and are the same side of like two sides of the same coin. You don't really get that in Heat, and you get way more time and way more development with. Actually, sorry, as far as screen time, I don't know that it's more, but way more development of the character, way more avenues by which to to like identify that that guy is a person like a real yeah. person like there's no reason to ever think that 
the De Niro character isn't just a psychopath. Like, cause he is, mm-hmm. um, like he kind of has a love interest and I didn't buy any of that at all. No, and not even for shoot, a second, which not just even feels for totally a second. Shoehorned. Do I believe that he's in love with judging Amy? <laughs> <laughs> See, meanwhile, I was like, I was like, who is that? Oh, that's Lori Garvey with a drawl. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who admittedly, she doesn't really speak for the majority of her screen time. Or so whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, like it, that felt shoehorned in like, oh wait, one of our leads is like a two dimensional character. Let's throw in a romance. Great. Well, and, that's, that's the thing is, is it almost feels like that they wrote, they wrote Vincent's character, Pacino. And then he, like the antagonist, like they wanted to like make him similar. And then they started to, like you're saying, shoehorn in all of those bits, but without giving you the backstory, like the most backstory we get is that he has this quote about like this thing, this rule that he, this 30 second rule that he lives by that he has to be able to like drop everything. And we only know that he lives by that rule because he says it twice in like five minutes. (laughs) Uh, But which was uh, infuriating to me, poor writing. Uh, But the, but yeah, like it seems like, I was like, Oh yeah. So like, if we want to, if we want to really play into this, we have to, if, if Pacino goes, uh, it goes through like has the he, he's on his third marriage. He knows where he stands. He knows who he is and how this is all going to play out. So there's that. We also need to explore that with De Niro. It's like I don't think you needed to do that with Neil. I don't think it really mattered. I I actually think it would have played more if he was a little bit like while similar in some respects. If he was kind of opposite in that, like I think they nailed it when you're in Neil's apartment, Robert De Niro's character, and there's there's nothing there, right? When are you going to get some furniture uh, when I get around to it? Yeah, that that little bit of banter with the visual setup of seeing the room was, uh-huh. did miles for his character that all of the exposition couldn't. Right, right. Yeah, like, right. I learned way more in those 90 seconds about that person. Yeah, like you... you, you you get this interesting thing. You get you get how he is. You get what he does. Like he he keeps he doesn't he doesn't really have many possessions, which is kind of funny uh, for a bank robber that he doesn't he he kind of it seems like he just wants to rob banks. That's kind of what it feels like. He likes doing that bit of it. Although it does seem like he's very sure this is his one last job. Ever. Right, and then he's gonna relax or something. Sure, whatever. That's that's. But fine. even that seemed kind of more like. Well, I gotta check the box on like the of the heist guy thing. There's gotta be a one last job in which I'm gonna go away to some parents. one last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh. I mean, you could really just put that character down to a couple snapshots, right? It's his quote about leaving in 30 seconds, and him. It's yeah, sorry. It's a quote about him leaving in 30 seconds. It's the Spartan apartment. It's him giving the crazy guy. The license to kill the third guy yep. because well, we uh, killed yes. two others. The and nod, the nod scene. Him and it's him deciding that he just had to go get revenge on that guy when he had a Wayne Grow everything he wanted, everything he told us he wanted: the girl, the money, the ability to go to paradise. And yeah, for no reason at all, goes and kills that guy. Which is like I. The only thing that I will say in the defense of that is that. W- it seems like everybody else is saying, oh, you're really going to have to settle down at some point. Like, it seems like that's being put on him. But realistically, his character kind of just wants to be in this life is what it seems like. Sure. And, you know, well, sorry. And actually, I'll make an addendum. There's also the, you know, I'm never going away. Um, right. But honestly, it just felt like that scene was, again, shoehorned in just so that he wouldn't go. away. Right. To prove how much he wouldn't go away. Yeah, it, it, it's weird. It is. It's odd. Uh, Vincent is written far better than Neil. Yeah, like you get okay. <clears throat> we think this guy. Well, at first, I didn't assume they were married. I assumed that like he was like the new boyfriend. Right. Like, oh no, they're married. Whatever. And it's like okay, damaged guy. You know, was uh, what was the line from Wedding Crashers? You know, guess he's got a, a tragic past. Oh, yeah, he's got haunted, a past. Past. Tragic yeah, haunted past. <laughs> um, like, okay, we've got that. We've got, you know, he's the new sheriff in town in this family. We've got the depressed girl who you can see he's got compassion for, but mm-hmm. also is kind of like, mm, I just more am annoyed by the other jerk-off father. You know, we see him. He's not quite Willem Dafoe from 
um boondock saints but kind of in the same you know methodology oh oh yeah 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 um maybe i'll do for sure looking around <laughs> he's looking around at the crime scene he's just bing 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 like he knows he knows exactly what he's looking for right yep you know oh you see this and that means this you see that and it means that blah 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 okay very proficient at his job we realize that this is kind of a white whale for him it's just it's taken till now for him to connect the fact that this is a same oh. crew that he's going after mm-hmm you know, and we see the ups and downs. We see him on the job. We see him do some of the UWA stuff. We see him be straight up. We see more compassion. We see him get more distant from the wife. You see the, there's a little bit of the selfishness of him wanting to be just in the shit, but also when he starts getting cruel and mentioning the terrible things he sees on the job, it's like, okay, yeah. no, it isn't just that. Maybe he wants to keep that wallowing for himself but it is actually his one olive branch he can give to his wife is right like why would i want to talk to you about this stuff but even even in that it almost seems like we we get some depth there that they don't actually have to give to you like word for word where like he has the three marriages right and it's like it seems like obviously like he knows how this plays out he seems to know and even i mean he has this conversation vincent has this conversation with neil in the diner like he he knows that the marriage is on the way out. Uh, he's like kind of resigned to that, just because like that's the nature of his relationships. And I mm-hmm. think there is there is some it is there's interesting depth to that character where he like he knows where he stands and he knows what he is. Um, there's a part of him that wants that other piece, but knows that he has to. But he seems to be super honest that like you're not going to get that from him, which it was very it, it was interesting and it's dark and it's sad. It's uh, but it's a. I think it was a really well written character. Yeah. Um. You did well, mention. And then, I mean, you, you say you get the you get the as things are going as well as they can for him professionally, it's going worse for him personally, and mm. he's still he has an opportunity to pull away there, and instead he makes it his like mission to save that girl. Right. And and it becomes an like an opportunity for him to maybe make amends with the wife. I mean, he says, well, we're sitting there, right? Yeah. I don't see it working out, but you get the impression that after that's all said and done, he's going to rededicate himself some, because like we already knew, like she says, well, what's it going to take for you to back off or whatever? He's like, I don't know if I can. I'm like, I'm doing this stuff. And maybe he gets his white whale and he does back off. Now, not to say like maybe five years maybe. from now, it still hasn't worked out, but it, it does feel like they might have a second life, you know? Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. It seems that that's a possibility. I think what's interesting is that there's like, a, uh, without getting into drugs, they are playing, they're playing that card of like almost of an addiction to a Like he needs to, like he, like he kind of has to get Well, his- we know he's an alcoholic, right? We, we just, we, we we're spared the seeing him blind drunk being an right. asshole, abusing anyone, driving drunk, whatever. We don't see any of that shit. But you see him looking to make sweet love to a bottle of Jack, and it's like, okay, yeah. that, no, that's... We're checking a box, of course, mm-hmm. but, like, if you're going to do it, I guess do it subtly like that, because at least it leaves some things interesting and, like, open-ended there. But I... I what you need to know. I think part of his fix is chasing down the unsolvable or, like, the, the seemingly out-of-reach crime... Uh, at the expense of his personal life, like all of that combined seems to be his drug. Yes. I yeah, no, say. it's the, it's a terrible cocktail of the adrenaline of the hunt, the crash of the cortisol of like embarrassing failure and pour it all over some Jack and swirl it with some ice. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's that cocktail that he's creating that he needs. He needs the high and the low and the alcohol chaser for all of it. Right, and then you got to get something similar with Neil's character, where he's like, he's got it like doing the bank robberies, and also like treating Val Kilmer like a brother, like and like, well, like <laughs> trying to save him from like the disastrous life that he's set out for himself. Like, there's something similar there, which is kind of funny. It's just like on the other side of it, it's on the more criminal yeah. version of it, but it's the only problem is I never bought it for that character. No. I- He's a he is a psycho, and all of those things that he does, it's so obvious that he's doing it a hundred percent for himself. Mm-hmm. The only reason he's taking care of Val Kilmer is because he needs him in his right. The only reason he's going to the wife to tell him to tell her to to back off and give him a second chance is to keep Val Kilmer in the game, right. you know, because he knows he's going to spin out of control without her. Because 
Like he says right immediately, oh yeah, if it doesn't work out, you know, just hold together for another, you know, give him another chance. Yeah. If it doesn't work ne- out, I'll send next you time, player. sure. Like, but this whole time he's planning on this being the last role. Like, so meanwhile, yeah. yeah, it's it's his whole last job. Oh, I just need his head straight for like yeah, three he's weeks, and then like you know whatever you know. He's a, he's a garbage human being. Um, and like it, none of it's real. Like I, I, you can see a ton of selfishness in the Pacino character, but you can at least see the tendrils of connection to the other people. Where, for their sake, like he saves his stepdaughter, he is trying to shield his wife. Like, like those things are done. So like you know, he's trying to hunt down De Niro. Those things are done selfishly, but with at least an acknowledgement of. The greater good that comes. Yeah, yeah, they're they're selfish things, but they are like under the category of noble for like to some degree. Whereas yes. De Niro's are is it, just all around. It's it all just feels all bad. Like he doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't care whether Val Kilmer is happy or not. He just cares that he's happy long enough to go do this job. I think the best scene that they did with Neil uh, Robert's character is that him walking away from judging Amy. Yeah, like in the car. I don't know her name in the movie. Well, so that's why oh, I, I called her. Don't I don't know if they actually yeah. said it, which was, oh no, I think they said it. Uh, but anyway, him walking away from her in the car, like that was, that was good. It's like I, the whole time thinking like this character is not turning around. The idea of him leaving and getting out of this is a mistake. Like they can't possibly do that. When he, Edie, when he looks at her in the car and sees Neil looks at Edie in the car, sees Vincent coming towards him, gives her one last look, and runs off, and she kind of breaks down in the car, like, freaking out a bit. Like, that's that's a decent scene. That's probably the thing that is most true to Neil's character that they've done, uh, and they needed to do to kind of make it all work, I feel like. Well, that's what I was going to say. Is it's the only time he's really being honest. He yeah. says, eh, I'm going to try to have my cake and eat it, too, knowing that I'm probably not going to be able to keep my cake. And then <laughs> when he doesn't, he's just like, all right, yeah, I got what I wanted. I'm gonna go now. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 pretty messed up. Um, we talked a little bit about Pacino going Pacino, going full going full Ua. Uh, <laughs> and I actually started the process of I I repurposed my Black Eye accountability section of my notes, which we haven't really gotten into in a long time. Uh, and I just retitled it Pacino Counter. And it's just like, how many times did he go full Pacino? Uh, and I have a couple here uh, that I thought were great. Starting with the one way that's like uh, that, that's like a 10, not an 11. He, he does dial it up to 11 multiple times. But at a 10, there's the scene where they're at like the shipping containers. And they, <laughs> they rush to see like what they were looking at. What are they looking at? What are they looking at? And he starts laughing. He's like, they're looking at us. And that whole thing that he does. And he's like, he's looking for whoever's looking at them. The, that scene is ridiculous. But I think what makes that scene the most ridiculous is the fact that De Niro's Neil is on top of whatever structure that is. And that he got there to take those pictures. No. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He just left not 30 seconds ago. He didn't drive to the crane, climb up the crane. <laughs> I don't buy it. I don't. Well, no, buy it's it. not thirty seconds. Like the surveillance left, or like went to a staging area to meet up, while they would then go with a warrant to search and see what they were looking. For. Like some time had passed. Now maybe it's an hour. I don't know, but like it's not like it's been a day. No, the guys ran down from the tower, told Pacino they got in a car and they drive over there. But, but Pacino's not there. Yeah, he is. He's behind the tower. He's he's sitting there in his car waiting for feedback. I don't know why I, I thought. Anyway, that it's 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 not that it's not that big of a deal. But it was it was a silly scene. It was stupid. Uh, then there is uh, one of my favorites uh, when he's talking to Richard and he needs uh, he wants some uh, he he wants some information about like this is where we lead to Richard bringing him to the guy from Ace Ventura who then tells him about who, who ends up slipping and saying the word slick, which gets us down the whole rabbit hole. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Richard, <laughs> Richard says, it took me a second to realize, it. <laughs> you know what I'm that. talking about, right? I can't remember his yeah, actual it, name. Isn't he, wasn't he a rapper? Yes. Um, I forget his name, but, uh, in, in, in very Pacino style, Richard says, I'm a good citizen. And Vincent says, and I'm Donald Duck. 
It's a great scene. Uh, well, I would say, though, the two, the two that you've highlighted, though, they actually kind of work. They're fine. You ready for this one? And, like, I was I wouldn't actually, the first one you mentioned, I wouldn't give that, like, a full, like, because, like, when you consider, like, what's going on, he realizes he's been had, like, ah, it's a little, like, I don't, not gallows humor exactly, but it's one of those, like, if you don't laugh, you're going to cry type of situations. Sure. Sure. I'm, I'm glad you're catching on to, to what I'm doing here. And that's easing you in to the number one, the all time best ooh moment. And that is because she's got a great ass and you're and you got your head all the way up it. That line was like, I, I feel like I might have been dozing off for a second. And then I woke up. I was like, what is happening right now. <laughs> Wait, was that during the interrogation? Is that what it was? That's when he's talking to, um, what's his name? Uh, oh my god. Hank Azaria. He's talking to Hank Azaria. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, uh, sorry, I was thinking of when they they meet the, was it the informant or whatever, like the guy who calls them and he, they throw him through the window and all that, like, because he goes overboard in that scene a little too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, the, this is first. no. This is, he meets Hank Azaria. They talk. He's uh, talking about Ashley Judd's character, who is Val yeah. Kilmer's uh, wife. Wife. They're married, right? Yeah, with the kid yeah. Dominic. They have the same ridiculous last name. Um, but <laughs> then there's well, then there's Val Kilmer. There was that whole thing, um, which is really funny. Ponytail, like not a not a good look for him. What's that? It's a ponytail. Not a good look for him. Not a good look. No. Uh, I do like like they actually developed his character pretty well. Like and he's 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 fairly fleshed out. Uh, yeah, he is a he's one of these heist members. He's a gambling addict. He makes a lot of mistakes. He's kind of shitty. He is shitty, and he uh, a very shitty. Hot but he's he's good with the fake IDs and the disguises. And I think that like that's all you need to know about him. I like that they 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 dangle the the fake ID in front this? of you in the beginning scene, and then he gets away in the car in that one scene, even though they stop him. That's a great yeah. That's a great callback to the opening of the movie. Uh, you know, I forgot about the fake ID. I guess it makes it oh, when, when he's buying the explosives, right? I guess it didn't that's right. really register for me um, that that's what was going on. But yeah, no, that is a, a good job. I was, I was wondering, is was this all just? Like him practicing for the saint a couple years later, the fake IDs and the disguises. I'm not, I feel like I saw that movie, but I don't remember it. I saw part of it. I know that was like a I think a famous television show in the eighties that they Okay. That sounds in vaguely familiar. Nineties. And it was a huge flop with Kilmer as the lead. Yeah. He was in a he was in a bunch of movies in that time frame, like weird shit. Right. Well, I mean, well, ninety five. He was in Heat and Batman Forever, right? So sure, sure. Oh and man, since, I think ninety seven. Yeah, I'm gonna take a quick peek at his movies while you keep going. But yeah, Kilmer, uh, not a, not a good, not a, not a good actor. Is that fair? Is that fair to say? Um, it's not fair to say because in nineteen ninety four, he's tremendous as Doc Holliday. Oh, good call, good call. Okay, Val Kilmer doesn't have a doesn't have a great agent. Is that fair to say? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, like he's fine in Heat, right? He's he, yeah, I guess he's fine. He's fine. Yes, yeah. It's more of the writing, I guess, than anything else. But yeah, he's fine. Yeah. But you're right, Daka. Uh, yeah, that, that was a good role. But I, I guess I don't know. Um, is it and everybody gets one situation. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I thought he's fine as Batman. What was the? He was fine. Um, he was as I feel like as good as you're gonna get in that uh, Schumacher Batman. Now was duo. he in? Was he in? I, I'm trying to. I'm, I feel like I'm misremembering. Now. Um, he was in. Was he in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang? Was that the other thing he was in? I don't. I don't know. What's What's the island yes. of Doctor Moreau? I don't know. I've never seen it. I remember. I think I've seen that like a long time ago. But well, I I certainly don't know. I've heard of it. I don't know anything about it. He, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying. To, I, I I I feel like I have an opinion about him, but I guess I haven't really seen him in enough things. Yeah, he was in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. That's right. It was, I mean, he's him and um, is it him and Travolta? Who's in? Or no, him and Robert Downey Jr. That's who it is. Sorry. He was also in, I mean, did we, I forget, did we do Top Gun on the show? I think we might have done it. No. 
And we didn't do it? No, definitely oh, not. Well, he's in that. Um, that movie's bad. <laughs> Top Gun is a bad he movie. He is in that. <laughs> Uh, I, I can confirm that he is in that movie. <laughs> I I I've enjoyed watching Top Gun in the past, but if you're on the if you're on the train of Top Gun is great, you give it watch it with a critical eye just once. Just Someone said something once. I was reading I was reading something recently and like that just kind of like in the process of that article it was just like by the way what exactly is the plot of Top Gun and I was like you know I've seen a lot of the movie I don't know if I've ever seen the whole thing start to finish. I couldn't tell you what the plot of that movie is. Uh, let me let me pull. I'm really curious how they how IMDb sums it up. Give me one second. I'll pull it up. All right, Top Gun, 1986. As a student of the United States Navy Elite Fighter Weapons School, compete to be best in the class. One daring young pilot learns a few things from a civilian instructor that are not taught in the classroom. That tracks. That's the plot of the movie. That's what the movie's about. But is that a plot? I think that's the question overall, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, those are all things that happen in the movie. Something something about his dad was a pilot, and he's a hothead, and now he's a pilot, and his dad's dead? So... He, he's got to be the very best... The best that, that ever was? That no one ever, <laughs> ever was. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, it's funny because you distracted uh, me with obvious Pokemon reference, but I was <laughs> caught up with the fact that I just realized that the backstory of Tom Cruise's character in Top Gun is exactly the same as the backstory of his character. I don't think I actually saw a few good men. Oh, that's a that's a serious oversight. Uh, no, it's I'm pretty sure it's on my list. I'll be, oh, let me check real quick, make sure oh, that I'm not okay. missing it entirely. But I'm pretty sure it's on my list. I have a list called Movies to Watch, <laughs> and I can confirm A Few Good Men is on there. Okay. Oh, it's the, f- yeah. it, it's, I, I, that started at the bottom of the list, and I scrolled up. It's actually the first movie that was entered onto that list long ago when I started it. I don't often nice. go back to the list and actually check things off. I should check it out and see which of the movies I've actually watched since I added them to the list. Somehow none? Somehow, <laughs> probably none. <laughs> But yeah. Uh, anyway, hey. Uh, so Tom Tom Sizemore is playing Tom Sizemore in this movie. That's right, that guy. Right, he's Dan, that guy. Danny right? Trejo is literally playing. His Tom name Tom. is Trejo. <laughs> 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 that threw me for a loop when I sent you that message last night or two nights ago, whenever that was. It's funny because I think you were about half an hour or forty five minutes behind me watching the movie that night. Mm-hmm. Cause like I also fired up that evening, but like when you were messaging stuff to me, I had already passed those things. I right. think you know. Well, the, so like, yeah, it had to have been because when you did the oh my god is is Danny Trejo playing Trejo? <laughs> I was like, you know, I I found that out a while back. That was ridiculous. Uh, Ted Levine in this movie doing a doing a death scene. Oh, he died. Yeah. Uh, also, surprisingly, for once, good guy. Yeah. Yeah, that was surprising, wasn't it? Um, Actually, they had a real who's who of, of police officers, right? Because you have yeah. Pacino, you have Ted Levine, you have Wes Studi, which not seeing him as like an, like a Native American from the 1700s or the Sphinx from Mystery Men was a real <laughs> shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, and Den- then yeah, Dennis Haysburg. He plays cops a lot, I feel Not like. A, no, but he wasn't a cop. He was the guy who is the driver at the end. Um, McKelty Williamson, though. Oh, that's famous. who I'm thinking of. Sorry. Yes. yes. And he has played other. Like, he was in 24 as one of the guys at CCU, whatever. Like, he's played that sort of role before. But just, I was just kind of like, oh, wow. Like, all of these guys are famous or will be famous okay. maybe at the time they weren't famous then. Can we talk about uh, Dennis uh, Donald Donald Bre- Breeden? I guess this is his full name. A lot of these characters have full names that are not said on screen. I just want to point that out. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that we did not get last names like this throughout the movie. But uh, well, I find crediting thing like that weird because there's sometimes where like you get that where like you know it's like James Tiberius Kirk the third, and like they call them Jim the whole time in the movie, and it's like where do yeah. they establish that exactly? Right. And then there's other times where, like, you have 
someone who they refer to their character as first, like full first and last name multiple times on screen. And then you look in the credits and like, like they name, they only call him James Tiberius Kirk the third. And then on the character list, it's just Jim. And it's like, yeah, the guy has a name. Like yeah. they said it a bunch of times. <laughs> Well, I honestly for for this character, I was like a super. I was like, oh, like you know, he he's 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 made his way to the grill. He was really annoyed uh, when he first started working at this place. He made his way to the grill. He's still obviously disgruntled. He gets the he gets the opportunity to pull the job, and he's like, I was like, please don't do it. And then when he does it, I'm like, oh no, he's gonna die. And then but when he's on his way out of the building and he throws the manager on the ground, I was like, worth it. That was that was a hundred percent worth this entire thing. <laughs> You know, it's funny because when I was watching that, I they really developed that story over the course of the whole movie to the point where it's like, where the fuck is this going? Yeah. And like watching it all go out, it reminded me of some of those things that they would do in Breaking Bad, mm-hmm. whether it be across an episode or a whole season where they would just give you a little grain of something across a long period of time. And it's like, I don't know what this has to do with anything and then like it pays off in the end it's like right. oh wow okay yeah and like that was this and i was like oh that you do not see that in a movie every day yeah that was it's heavy like, though it takes balls to do that well yeah i mean as far as world building goes right it's pretty strong yeah because it gives you a snapshot into just kind of what life is around and in the circle but i feel like what's crazy like in the same movie where they do that and they write pacino's character really well and they they do the whole point of like introducing wayne grow in the beginning of the movie and tying him in in the end like they do a lot of good things but then they do a lot of trash like i, I don't understand like where the disconnect is yeah well the funny thing is like if you took one of those two storylines and you cut it and then you gave that time to making de niro a full character this movie becomes great. Like, but like, yeah, where's like, each, point. each of those two things on their own, like, if you tell me you have those things, it's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. That's an interesting way to expand this world a little bit. They both have like narrative reasons by the end where they happen. Like, great, cool. Feels fully fleshed out and developed. It's like, but like, your lead does, is it? Right. Ugh, that would, yeah, it's frustrating. It's like buying all of the greatest ingredients for like, a wonderful meal that you want to make and then buying like back uh, alley, like chicken that you're not <laughs> sure where it came from. You know what I mean? Like you get like the finest like saffron and like all of these like wonderful spices and like the freshest, most organic ingredients. And then like, you buy something that you're not entirely sure isn't immediately contaminated with some. 1995's heat back alley chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, uh, like, I, like we're doing a lot of nitpicking and, and like, i do feel like we sometimes fall into this sort of thing i think part of it is just us bucking at the idea of this being considered some sort of classic right yeah there are some things that are really well done that first heist scene with the armored truck strong was cool to watch that all like play out like and just like it, it is super tense when you're waiting to see well what sort of guys are these are they the guys that go in with you know fake guns and it's just a scare tactic are they guys with real guns and something goes wrong oh no they might be hardened psychopathic killers that yeah that that was the crazy thing right i was watching that scene and i actually like having that internal monologue i was like oh is this guy like so oh i wonder if they're gonna establish like how how invested are they into doing this like what what lengths lengths will they go to and then it's like and then that that's well they they take down the three guys i was like okay i know who these people are cool I, I but even ex- then, they introduced some doubt, right? Because they're going to kill Wingro for doing it. It's like, okay, yeah, sure. Like, we'll kill these guys to get the job done. But, like, you yeah. don't want to. And I was like, okay, right. that's an interesting ring. Right. Yeah, like, there's, like, uh, these underlying principles that they have. That was cool. Uh, establishing, like, that they're, like, their relationships outside of the heist. Like, they are, they are, they seem to be friends. Like, they go out to dinner with their families. The dinner like scene that. with all the families where everyone that, clearly knows the deal. Yeah, that was interesting. Um the entire movie from like when it starts to before the Lord of the Ring ending start is uh, just this like really slow build, but very consistent crescendo. Like it does get, it gets, it goes up, 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 up. And then it culminates in like, I don't know, a 10 to 15 minute, what feels like 
shootout uh, where I feel like I heard guns going off like all night last night. Like it was, <laughs> it was kind of crazy. Yeah, like that was a really well done scene. Like that mm-hmm. whole like the the bank robbery, the chase, the shootout, all of that. Like that's really compelling, thrilling stuff. Like that, yeah. it was great. Like un, unquestionably great. And 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 handled and done well. Like it was it, it was very intense and like heart pounding. Um wa- I definitely like I wanted to see them lose. I wanted to see the bad guys get taken down. Uh especially when that when uh um when that guy picks up the the kid as like a human shield. It's like no 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 no. <laughs> the worst part about that was it's it's like Ron, I was like, Oh, come on, don't take the kid oh, you're gonna take the kid hostage. Okay. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, that's, again, like, uh, enforcing Pacino's, like, uh, the soft spot that he has for for young people, like, killing the guy and then running over and taking the girl and, like, and running her away from it. I think that was great and, like, it plays into... Again, a nice, a, another, like, like it feels like there's a full portfolio of things that make that character as opposed to, like, four snapshots for the De Niro character. Yeah. Well, and the whole thing with Natalie Portman and, like... Or, him saving her like also it's also helps with the development of the character but at that point we're like so deep into it like it almost seemed unnecessary like there there are there are things that they like i think the movie could have been a lot of things could have been tightened in other areas to give again to spend a little bit more time fleshing out uh neil like like you were saying like he's just it's just he's so flat that it really it really hurts the movie yeah. Um and and honestly like you you probably do get enough information right where it's like okay, he seems a little bit like perplexed early on. Then we get you start to see you know he has oh, he didn't he didn't come and get her. That son of a bitch, you know what I mean? It's like okay, like it's not just like accounting at this point like oh, he feels bad for the girl or whatever, right? And then he's it's again and then I don't buy that it just happened to be a coincidence he drove by the girl sitting on the bench. Like, he was looking for her and yeah. picks her up and gives her, like, that's, again, it's compassionate for her. You know what I mean? Like, it's the only way that he really has to show that, like, hey, someone will give a damn about you. It may not be the way that you want. It may not be the person you want, but, like, someone <clears throat> yeah. cares is going to do the best they can with the limited time and ability and emotional, like, availability that they have to do this. Mm-hmm. I would say one of the, what, Another scene that they like they do take their time with that stuff because he he, he does he has he does have a lot of scenes, um and we we only needed like maybe two or three of these to really flesh him out but we got like twelve of them. Um, That being said, I wouldn't want to toss this scene because I thought it was really good when the mother knows that her daughter is under the under the sheet, um the uh that girl that Wangro killed. And he intercepts her running towards and like just embraces her. Like that's a great yeah. scene. Like that is played out really well. Yeah. And, and both of them are like uh they're negative ass in that scene. <laughs> it's really good. There are there was a lot of asses missing in that scene. And yeah. it wasn't just the weird nineties jeans from the time. Like it's uh, no. you know, it's no. and like just like <laughs> the fact that like it, it happens and then she almost tries to get away again and he pulls her in tighter. Like that 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 was really good. That was a good scene. Yeah, because that, that whole time I wondered why the Wayne Like, because, like, in another movie, like, Wayne would just show up in the final scene, mm-hmm. right? And, like, you were going after him again. Like, no, like, we, we follow his storyline throughout the movie, too. Like, yeah. you know, he's he just becomes a serial killer, apparently. Like, like in the sense that, like, we know that he is he has a methodology in to particular people he goes after. Not just, like, wanton killing, right? Like, he kills women. Girls, actually, it seems. Like, he... She was like sixteen or seventeen, whatever it was, right? Yeah. Um, like that. Even he becomes a char- like a, a loathsome character, but he becomes a character. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Um. Uh, the end. The the way the movie ends. I, here's the thing. I don't like criticizing something where I don't have like the. Uh, I don't have something to say where like, oh, if you did this, it would have been better. Um. Or like I would have liked it better. I just the only thing I can say, but I just felt like it. It kind of it feels like it falls off by the end. Um, he well, that's I, the whole Lord of Lord of the Rings ending. Yeah, thing, right? where it's like the like the the actual climactic scene of the movie is that chase, like you know, right, right. and then 
you're going to get the fallout for that, of course. Like, it might take 15 or 20 minutes to wrap all that up, but, like, we get a whole nother chase sequence. <laughs> right. That. Yeah. Oh, that was a little weird. That can't be as compelling. Like, no. I mean, like, it was like, a, it was like a cool, tense little scene in the airport, for sure, but, like, the whole story being told across that arc of that chasing is not nearly as compelling. Right. <sighs> yeah. It's a, it's kind of okay. Yeah, Cause in that moment you're like, Oh wow. Like this is it. Like we're in the end. Like this is the end game. This is the movie needs to, needs to close out now and it needs to be big. And like, I, I thought I was actually like, I felt like, Oh, like maybe it will end in the street and some, and the two of them will end up killing each other because that would actually be kind of fitting. Like if they both shot each other, like that would be kind of fitting mm-hmm. for what the story was they're telling. Uh, but, but no, then, then it goes on for like another hour, but it's, <laughs> uh, what are you going to do? It's fun. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, a lot of, there's a lot of missed marks, but which, but in the middle of that, there's also a lot of really great things that are going on, which is why I would say that it's a good movie, but it's definitely a, a yeah. tremendously flawed movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are you going to do? I was a little frustrated early on with it. Uh, cinematography wise I do not I don't I, I, I understand here's here's one of those things I understand I don't like okay I understand what the effect of having the camera be kind of shaky and really tight on a person's face or like really tight on a very specific thing it, it gives you a little bit of a claustrophobic feel it actually makes you feel like you're there like like you're in the room uh, yeah, it enforces intimacy I cannot stand it i do not like that mechanic i don't i i understand what you're trying to do but i feel like there's other ways to do it uh and the most offensive part about it is it makes me feel sick i actually get like i don't i'm not i don't often get motion sick but that that tight frame and the movement around that's a little bit too rapid and a little bit too not my movement makes me it unsettles my stomach and i don't like watching it that's mm-hmm. just and uh, it was it was one of the the main issues that I had out of the gate with the uncut gems. It was that it was that movie was <laughs> up Sandler's nose like eighty percent of the film. Yeah, it depends on how it's deployed. I, I don't inherently hate it, but like I I do feel some of the same way that you feel about it. It's just sometimes it just feels totally unnecessary. There's some scenes though where I think it kind of works out. Like just just generally speaking, I'm not talking about this movie huh? specifically. Yeah, well, that's the thing too. Like, if you're using it, I guess it could be used um, sparingly and to some uh, like to good effect. But I that was not what I was getting out of it here. Like, I don't want to be in the bed with Pacino. Like, I don't want to be here. Like, it's <laughs> it's awkward. It's uncomfortable. Uh, I don't want to be in the shower with him either. No, no, no. Al, you got anything else in this movie? No, I think that about wraps it up. That wraps it up. All right, Heat, about a seven. <laughs> That's all for this week's episode of Flicks in a Six. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have a movie for us to review or nuggets for us to discuss, you can send those requests to Flicks in a Six at thespintune.com or tweet us at thespintune. Tune in next week for more movie and beer goodness. Until then, I'm Anthony Costanzo. I'm Al Thanks for coming out. <laughs> <laughs>